<laughs> so here we are at the dev Q&A, the uh, stream's about to begin. Uh, this is the meeting station. We've got just about everyone here. I think we're just waiting for the last few people to, the delegates to arrive. Got over 150 people in the uh, stream waiting for it to begin. And uh, I think it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to head inside myself. Uh, Cal, you're in the center? Okay, that's all good. That will be in second. So here is how the format is going to work. Uh, we have a list of questions that Calbiri and Schema has already gone through. We're going to read off the questions. There, Cal will answer. And then, and they're all separated by topic. So what will end up happening is at the end of the topic, we're going to do a round robin with everybody that's in the room. Just a quick, is there any extra question or any comments you'd like to add? It'll go one on by one. We're going to try to keep this formal. All of this will be filmed that you guys can watch it later on on my channel. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if we could really quick for everybody here so that they can get used to your voices, Delmont, go ahead and say hi. Hey everybody, how's it going? And I am Ryben, of course. Uh, Tamino, if you can hear me, go ahead and say hi, please. Yeah, hi, all right, man. And Zero. Hello. And Apex. Hello. Phantom? This should be fun. And the man of the hour, Calviri. Hello, everyone. All right. Thank you all for coming here. I want to make a, a, a big thank you to Mushroom Fleet. Without them, not be able to host this. Uh, and a huge thank you to Schema, Calviri, Kupu, and without whom we would not have this game to begin with. Without Hi. further ado. We're gonna get we're gonna get this started. So I'm gonna mute up TeamSpeak and uh, y'all get to watch that opening again. Welcome to the official StarMate Q and A. We've got quite a big turnout here. Thank you all for being here. Um, I think we're gonna end up jumping right into this. If that's all right with everybody else. Yeah, let's get it off the ground. All right. In in that case, uh, Calbiri. If you would be willing to introduce yourself and give everybody, those people that may not know, a little bit of uh, info about what, who you are and what you do on StarMade. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Calbury, and I help with PR for the game, and I dabble some with uh, integrating ideas into actual functioning systems. All right. And, and how long have you been working with uh, Schema then? I've been with the game for over a year, but I've actually been actively on the team for a couple months. All right. And so there's your credentials. Nobody should, can deny them now. Mwahaha. ha ha yeah, I'm still a little tired. Leave me alone. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's get started. Um, the format for this, like I said, is gonna be, we're gonna go via topic and we're gonna go ahead and list through the questions one by one, and we'll allow Calbiri to answer as best he can. Um, afterwards, at the end of that list, we're going to go ahead and go through everybody here in TeamSpeak, and they'll be able to uh, question, comment, learn sort of thing for everything. So, here we go. You ready, Cal? Yeah. All right, so the first question is... How did you first get started into development, developing StarMade? Now, I understand you're going to be answering for Schema in this case, yes? Yeah, they're, um, these first three questions are really directed towards him. All right, um, we'll take it away. So it, just, just to paraphrase for him, um, for, uh, for Schema, he said it went from being a hobby to uh, his full-time job. Um, he's always wanted to be a programmer. All right. And the second question on the list, what is the hardest problem you currently see for the brightest possible future of StarMade? Uh, Schema just hopes that he can afford to con continue making the game um, and make it the best it, that it can be. He doesn't really see many limitations otherwise, but things can get harder as time goes on. That's expected. So just for everybody else out there, that means go buy the game. Come on, help him out. 
Or at least that's what I would say. I'm not going to put words in your mouth or schemas, but that's what I would say. The uh, other half of it is saying, uh, you know, I it, every obstacle he's come up with so or come up against so far, he's found ways around it. Very, very true. And I am forever thankful. Uh, let's hit number three. Is there a possibility that Star Maid will run better in the future, a.k.a. A, an FPS boost sort of thing? Um, Scheme is continually trying to uh, work on this. Like the current pre-build is a major improvement. You can't really give... Uh, there's not a lot you can say about things like this because if you knew all the possibilities, he would have added it into the game already. It's a process that takes time. Um, the dev build is already running leaps and bounds beyond what it was and uh, we'll continue to uh, do what we can to improve it. And I can vouch for that. The dev build is so much better. <laughs> All right, let's hit up the next one. Um, will the collision system be improved? Nice. Will the collision system be improved? Currently, the larger ship is the one that gets teleported, which does seem a bit odd. Yeah, the emergency system will get overhauled. Um, sorry. Yes, the collision system will be improved. The emergency system will also get overhauled so that... Uh, the ships will get teleported backwards slightly instead of just being jumped around. So when you get into a heavy collision situation, it'll feel like you're rubber banding instead of just having this giant teleport. Yeah, that should help quite a bit. Oh, all right, and then uh, do you plan on making it possible to bookmark or catalog waypoints and coordinates? Yes. Best answer ever. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I know you had a, sp uh, a personal reason to want to answer this one. So wh why is there no RGB color selection? Now, I thought the answer was simpler when I put the question on here. And I did put this question on here because people were asking. Um, it didn't make it in time on the, uh, on the Reddit post. Um, I talked to Schema and actually got the details, and what it comes down to is adding an RGB color selection for block types increases the block data to 12 bytes up from its current 3 bytes per block. It also adds that same impact to your graphics card. And uh, for some tech jargon here, which I don't understand, currently 4 floats per vertex need complete, need complete with normals. Lighting and shading. Um, in addition to the memory, the chunks also have to be sent over the network. So adding this much data would cripple the scalability that is one of the key features of StarMade. You wouldn't be able to make giant ships anymore. Yeah, and that's that doesn't sound like fun. All right, so I think we've already gotten through the first topic, which is pretty cool. So let's do a little round robin here. And uh, Dawan, any questions, comments, concerns, etc.? Oh boy. Well, uh, in general, uh, where are we looking uh, for things like, I, I tell you what, I'll make it a simple one. Plex door wedges, yes or no? <laughs> um, there's a problem with those in, if you're using it for inside or outside. Uh, an internal door, there's no point in having a Plex door wedge because you're going to have half the block invisible anyways. Right, so if you're trying to fit inside of a square hallway, it's just not going to work. And if you're using it with existing wedges, then there's no point in having it. Schema says they can be done. Yeah, they can definitely be done. I was going to you know, really quick if uh, he has anything to ask. I have arrived. Welcome, Apex. Um, well, I guess Tamina don't want to talk. So, uh, Zero, any, any question under what I... I, 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 that makes sense, and I am, I'm all for that. I was getting to that. I mentioned the internal and external. Internally, using it for doors, there's not a lot of reason for it, although having the option is probably going to be a good thing. Externally, people can do whatever they want, and they come up with ingenious uses for things. Um, this is also a good place to mention um, that uh, there's a, 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 G, a graphic user interface update that we're going to be working on. And one of the things in that is a shape selector for block types. 
This will uh, reduce the inventory clutter, so you can use one block to get all five of the current shapes and any possible future shapes that we add to that. Ooh, fantastic news. All right. Uh, Tomino, did you have any other questions, or are you all set then? All right, anything from you, Zero, under the what you would call general tab? Um, no, the only thing I really have a question for is already on the list, so I got no problem waiting. Sounds good. Apex, anything? Not that I can think of. And Phantom, anything at all? I'm good. All right, let's move on to the mm -hmm. next bit. I'd have a question, but I'm really distracted by how pretty this is. Fair enough. All right. Uh, so next, next, next bit will be under planets and environment. Uh, you ready to go, Cal? Yeah, I'm here. All right. I'm ready. Uh, what? <laughs> We're always ready. That's the Navy way of saying it. Uh, what do you think of the current state of planets, and do you currently have any plans to further develop them? Well, to start, two-sided planets are confirmed. This is referring to the uh, the gravity the Oreo style that uh, really confuses people. The planets won't look like Oreos. The gravity will be two-sided like an Oreo is. Um, we're discussing Ooh. actual generation styles for the two-sided planets. And yes, we did notice the island that uh, was posted in the forums recently. We, there's options and we're looking into it. Might I just suggest one? Hourglass. Nice. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. Wouldn't that be an Oreo? Kind of, but... But Oreo planets are officially confirmed, I heard that right. What about double stuff Oreos? Somebody had to say it. Definitely. Um, <laughs> Alright, uh, will there be something like a realistic universe with moons orbiting planets, orbiting suns, being part of a cluster which is orbiting a black hole at the center of the galaxy with a huge empty space in between? So, an actual universe. Yes. Yeah. Simulated in the game. Yeah, we yes. have a chance for that. There's limitations yep. because it is a game and we don't want to make it boring. But yeah, we, we want that. Well, I mean, I'd like to see moons just generating with your planet. They can generate in sector and be geostationary moons. They can generate outside of the sector and be orbitals. Man, you're talking my language. Ooh. All nerds here. On the subject of planets, I was going to say rings. That's it, it, I have a huge list of things. That's one of them. Awesome. This, this is my wish list of things I'd like to see in the game. Yeah, I, I don't know if you'll actually see physical rings made of blocks, maybe, but I, I hope at least a graphical effect for the looks. That's awesome, mate. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I have an idea. What about gas giants, where it's just a very large, almost sector-wide skybox? Yeah, um, that's been that that's been planned, and it's actually is one of the old confirmed features. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, we have a feature list. Um, it's really old, and I need to redo it. Fair enough. But yes, um, the different planet types. So, you know, gas giants, they can have moons, they can have rings. You know, I, I, adding um, a non-physical planet is... I hope it's easier than adding an actual planet. Yeah, it would be a pain if it ended up being even worse. And we don't want too much lag, right? Yeah, I... Yep. Well, hopefully there's other effects that will impact you while you're in there. Such as horribly crushing your ship. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> sch schema also just reminded me that obviously gas giants can even be round because they're non-physical. Good point. All right. Let's so move on to the next one for the moment. Um, do you plan to change water physics and, and or lava physics? Yes. Um, we plan on having liquid moving fluids um as well as a source block i've discussed this with schema at when adding the blocks adding the source block as a separate block from the current decorative blocks and we'll treat the current decorative blocks as a um a synthetic you know decorative block right like it's a lava simulator block so 
that way people who have put this stuff on their ships won't have their ships ruined. All right. Sounds good. I think uh, if you're following along with me, Cal. Um, so with the day and night cycles on planets now, could we see a stronger light source to avoid having to cover every inch with plex lights? I, I assume that's referring to in the shadows. And uh, yeah, lighting is going to be worked on constantly. Um, things like this come up as we improve, you know, one aspect, we find that something else is lacking, like lighting. It used to be everything was really well lit, so our lights didn't have to shine very far, but now with actual shadows, we're going to have to change that. All right, sounds good. Yeah, go ahead. We're on Plex Lights, we may as well do it now. They should be able to. I, I, I can't remember specifically if we, Schema said that was or wasn't possible. I think he'll let me know here in a second. I'm going to tentatively say yes, that's an option that we will be working towards. Awesome. Yeah, um, he's also just reminded me that, uh, and he's listening. So, you know, <laughs> he's in chat. He's, he's just not able us. to speak today. Um. He, he is working or planning on an activation block so that we can connect things wirelessly. Well, I mean, like, you would you would place the activation block and then you would link other blocks to it. And then through the structure tab or through the um, computers or the, the programming system, the in-game one that's getting worked in, you, you could set it up so that it would tr control things in your ship. That being said, will we ever see those uh, programmable blocks usable with the Lua interface? Oh, trust I, me, Delmont. We'll get there. We'll get yeah, there. Yeah, that, that that actually that is covered in a question further down, so... Yeah, I don't think I've gotten that far in the list yet, then. <laughs> I get the feeling I walked Sorry. in on something missing the core of the topic, and I feel very sad about that now. <laughs> All right. Yep, yeah. well, welcome back, Zero. All right, let's uh, let's get the last question in this section done. Can the max speed server setting be in the DUI? In the single player, that can be added. Um, on multiplayer servers, uh, the server really has to have control of that, so it would be a server setting. Because um, having this too high is the main reason why players get teleported around, and uh, that's not something that anyone enjoys. Speaking from experience, I agree. I don't. I don't enjoy that at all. It's a little fun at first, but then it gets really annoying. We have uh, one more in that list, Ryan. But I think it might be. Oh uh, yes, we have a different one. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that on this list, so we're gonna go ahead and skip over that. And you guys can feel free to ask it at the end, or right now, actually, if you'd like. Uh, let's see here. Actually, yeah, we'll go ahead and ask that question. Um, there, is there... I'll, I'll throw it out. Sure. Yeah, in the admin tab for ships, would there be any way to set all blueprints to enemy use off in the GUI? I think there's a setting for that. I'm pretty sure there is a setting to have that set as default, but you mean existing, Toggleable. just like check all. Yeah, with the new scale, you know, basically scalable pirates. Um... I imagine it's possible, obviously, but I, I, I'm i going to assume that Schemic would say yes on that. I don't know if he actually wants it. Hang on. Yeah, sure. No problem. Awesome. That's <laughs> outstanding. I'm sitting yeah. here hedging my bets, and he's just like, duh, of course we can. Yeah, that's <laughs> very helpful in a server environment where all of a sudden we have pirate ships we didn't set, and we don't know which blueprints they are. Um, he says there's going to be more advanced admin controls in the game. Woo! I am so looking forward to this. Yeah, All right. stop the break. <laughs> of course. All right, so anything for planets and environment? Anything else, Dama? I think that's all in the list there, and uh, I don't have anything else. All right, and Tamina? And Zero? I probably missed something, but I'll get caught up on that later, so no. All right. Apex, any any other extra questions or comments? Not that I can think of. And Phantom? 
I'll take that as a no. All right, so, I mean, we're going to... I have got one. <laughs> My mum oh, okay. me. Um, you mentioned water physics and stuff. It may have been mentioned. But will there be water planets? You mean like it's all water, kind of like a gas giant? And yeah, round? round? Like, or do you, you just know, mean a solid planet with a big ocean on it? Um, I'm good either way, but I think one of the solid oceans that it... I mean, people tend to build boats, like literal boats. So for a cinematic perspective, you could have it start on the water and then just rise up. Like the hel helicarrier. Short of an open door, no. Um, well, to start with, we, we can't have water planets. Um, and there will be more planets added as long as we go along. As for how the ships interact with water, I'm going to just be confident in what Skimma can do and have high hopes. Something along the lines of adding greater sort of air resistance to the block. Yeah, something like that. I, I don't know. But um, I, I mean, what it comes down to is dealing with water physics is we don't want it to negatively impact the game. So it's what we can do that is um, beneficial and entertaining without, uh, you know, ruining the rest of the space part of the game. That being said, water physics in space, nebulas. Water planets are things on our wish list. Nebulas are things on our wish list. That's actually something somewhat related to the uh, new skybox that he implemented. Ooh. Are we possibly going to see mining things like gases from those nebulas? That's definitely something that's been discussed. It's It, it hopefully will be uh, something we see. Beautiful. And so let me let me just paraphrase this, if I may. So circular, all water planets probably or just straight up not going to happen. Um, is there any chance for a let's say a lake on a Terran planet? Well, no. I, I, both actually, um, a water on normal planets will happen. A water world around a normal planet probably will happen. A completely, you know. Just a globe of water with no core. I'm sure it can still happen. I think that was the best answer I've heard in a long time. And for all intents and purposes, our water blocks are almost like ice blocks there. And imagine flowing water. All right. That's impressive. I really like that. All right. Anybody have anything else they want want to add or anything else before we move on? And thank you, to around, thank you to everybody. I'm looking around the sector we're in in free cam mode, and I have to say the lighting is gorgeous. It really is. We'll do a quick flyby mm -hmm. after this next Spotlights section, just so everybody can see. can see. Spotlights work. <laughs> All right, let's move on to something I think is going to be really quite interesting for everyone. PvP and factions. I'm sure a lot of people dun, have dun, a lot dun. of questions about this. So, first question. What kind of objectives could you imagine for factions to fight over? Creating purpose and incentive for large-scale and long-drawn faction PvP. I'll point out the first one, which should be obvious to everyone, which is control of resources. Aside from that, um, we're planning on adding an automatic custom uh, quest system so that faction, or I'm sorry, automatic as well as custom. So there'll be one generated by the games and there'll be quests that you can set up yourself so that factions and individuals can um, make their own quests and those can be accepted by other players. That's just wow. All right, let's. I'm Go ahead. so looking <laughs> forward to that. It's awesome, man. All right, let's uh, let's let's uh, move on to the next one because I think these all tie in quite well. Um, could you imagine a world where a faction base would be attackable without making it impossible to maintain awesome bases? If so, how? 
Yes, actually this is one that Schema has put a lot of thought into. So I'm just going to read his response because it's far more, co more coherent than I could do on my own. The system is planned is a, uh, a point system. You get faction points over time for each member that you have in your faction. If a faction member dies, you lose points. Your base will consume faction points based on its size. So the larger it is, the faster it consumes those points. So if your base is too large, what happens is you consume more points than your faction members generate. Now, what happens if the points fall below a, thir a certain threshold is that your base becomes attackable, and uh, this way, no one is on. If no one is online, your base will be safe. But while you're actively playing, people can't attack you. They can kill you, and if they kill you guys often enough, your base will become vulnerable. At which point, they can start attacking your base and conquering you. I think this deserves some some time from you guys. Let's let's do a quick comment run. Dalmont, what do you think? Uh, that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, it gives gives everybody kind of a reason to coalesce into larger factions and actually ally with each other, and get more players involved and things like that because there's actually going to be a benefit to it. You know, collective protection uh, rather than now where essentially if you have a server environment you have a hundred scattered factions with one player in them because nobody needs to group together to accomplish anything. It's more of a comment I guess than a question but yeah A plus. <laughs> I do have one question pertaining to that. This protection system, protection by point system, would it apply to only stations designated as a home base or all stations? Um, I don't know. I think I'll wait a minute for a schema to tell me. <laughs> That's I one would, of the beauties, I, I, right? Well. I mean, I, I could come up with my own ideas, but this is his solution, and he probably already has an answer, so I don't need to make up a solution if he already has one, you know? Yeah. Agreed. All right, well, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and make my own comment, and uh, we'll see if Schema or yourself could come up with a great answer like you have been so far. Um, what about maybe alliances of factions? Let's say you have like Dalmont's SFW and my EFSF and we're small factions, but we don't necessarily want to give up our faction itself. Would there be a way to ally factions, not necessarily share the faction points, but somehow make an alliance system between the factions themselves? Beyond what we currently have. Right. Uh, and uh, maybe like more of a, an official version. So if you see your faction going to war with, uh, or uh, you know your allies' faction going to war with somebody, you can say, "Oh, well, uh, it looks like I should be going to war with them too." Or um, maybe have like a a way for one faction in general to say, "Hey, I'm calling all of my allies. We've got problems. I need some help from my allied factions." Now, I realize all this could probably be done through the faction itself, the faction system, individual itself. And if that's the case and that's the plan, then cool. But just a thought. All right. Um, so I, I got a few answers here for you. To be directly answering what you just asked, um, allies will give bonuses to your faction points, but not as much as your actual members give you. Quests will also give you bonus points towards your faction Awesome. That's really cool. Agreed. That being said, just to throw this out here, uh, would a sufficiently large faction or one with enough allies be able to distribute those points out over multiple stations, essentially creating multiple home bases? Now, um, this is something I was just going over with him. Um, requiring the creator of a quest to spend faction points to give that faction point as a reward, that implies that you would have the ability to trade faction points around between factions whether it be through manipulating the quest or just being a direct you know hey here's some faction points i don't know what we would go with it needs to be balanced so that we don't have exploits 
Um, also, he did answer um, the question previously about uh, other bases. They won't get invulnerability because um, it, it, that would just be too much. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. So your All home right. base will be safe, but anything you build beyond that to expand, you're going to have to protect. No, no. Uh, the from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, the home base is the only thing that uses faction points for protection. If you build an exterior base, you know, an outpost or something, you're going to have to stick a lot of shield blocks, etc. It's got to it. be defended more conventionally. Not the outposts. No, no, no. A outposts will not have invulnerabilities. Only what you only what you designate as your home base, and it is only invulnerable as long as your faction points. Um, are enough to pay for the consumption rate of that uh, of that base. Once it once it uses more points than you have, then what happens is it becomes vulnerable, and then you can be attacked. This is why if you build a properly sized base for your faction size, it won't ever consume more points than your player base is generating. And since you're all offline, no one can kill your players and cause you to lose points. So you're base will remain invulnerable. It, uh, this game also pointed out, you can always move your home base. Um, so, you know, you can go and be building a, you know, a huge stronghold way out in the middle of nowhere, right? And then until your faction actually is up to the point where it can support that, it would just be a vulnerable, or rather, it would not be invulnerable. Although I assume if you're making a fortress, it'll have some defenses. But the point is, as soon as it's ready and your faction um, player count can handle it, you can transfer your home base, and now that new base is now invulnerable. That makes sense. Awesome. Um, and that's what something really system? we can do now. He, he also said it's possible to, out, to add um, some protection for outposts based on uh, player spending. Right, so you could be like, okay, I want to have a secondary base. Maybe it gets a percentage protection. Maybe it gets a overall protection. But yeah. you would spend extra faction points, maybe at an increased rate, to run that auxiliary base. These are th these are just options that uh, we'll have to talk about and uh, make fit into the balance of the game. Well, it wouldn't have to be a hundred percent defense. That the invulnerability that home bases have, it could be as little as like 10 or 15 percent extra armor rating or something um would it's fine would this point system also apply to actual ships uh i doubt it i i, I don't see how the, the the point system would apply to ships except that um when you get killed you lose points do you mean like are you going to have to invest faction points to generate a ship or uh, is a yeah. ship going to cost points to operate? Yeah, like if you have a base that's relatively small because you don't have the faction points to it, then there's nothing um, in this system to stop people from having an absolute goliath of a ship. Yeah, but the ship is, invul is not invulnerable. It can be shot down. I suppose. Um, uh, sort of like slightly off of any... this, what about points spent to defend a ship that is docked to a station? So basically, would that cost, if you have a large ship docked to a small station, would it cost more points to defend it while the ship is docked? I, I'm going to say that's probably the, the station will take docked ships into account for its size. Um, like it it'll take that increased size of the dock or the mass on it into its uh, calculation for the faction points it uses. Yep. All right, I think we've kind of gone through this a lot. Um, does anybody have any other questions specifically pertaining to this one? Home base ships. <laughs> Three words. That would be cool. Actual mother ships. It, the ability well, to designate a ship as a home base instead of a station. Yeah. Yeah, that would be... 
Do you mean as an invulnerable home base or as the point that you spawn at? Either or. I think uh, oh, I think yeah. both. Well, I, I don't think it's a great idea to have a ship that's invulnerable flying around. Um, even if it's unarmed, that can be used as a, a shield of sorts it's and can cause some major exploit issues. Well, if it can't well then how about as a respawn point? The ability to use undetonators on yeah. ships. What if somebody spawned onto the ship whilst it was moving and they weren't automatically in gravity? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just spawn and immediately fly through the hull. It would be. All right. Um. All right. Uh, try... He's trying to point out um, that the, one of the reasons why there is uh, the enhancers work the way they do for docking is because as you increase the enhancer grouping size to add larger ships, you're also increasing the size of the entity that's holding it. This is one of the reasons behind that. Um, as you increase your enhancer groups, your station inherently must be larger. Yeah. That actually makes sense. Yeah, especially with the faction point, you would just have a larger station in general and it'd be using up more faction points. That being said, with faction points, could we in the future use them to, say, augment existing systems? Uh, AMCs are a little bit more powerful if you spend more faction points, uh, or your shields perhaps are a little bit more powerful for as a relative bonus, I guess, to members in your faction, sort of a logistical thing. So you, you increase the, uh, the point consumption of your faction and you get this bonus or that bonus. I imagine that's right. definitely a possibility. I, I don't know where we would go with that specifically. I mean, obviously there's lots of ideas. I, I, this isn't something I had thought of or had discussed with yet. So um, He did say uh, the problem with undetonators on ships is spawning in while the ship's in motion and you get left behind. It would be, point. Kind of, would be kind of funny, though, if they were being chased and people just kept spawning and flying through the hull and getting killed over and over again. You just put that a would lot be of block directly behind it. <laughs> it would be um, annoying, um, but it would be yeah, awfully be comical. Good, it would be pretty comical, though. For the, uh, for the ship misses, the possibilities um, not likely will have any weapon bonuses, but there's potential for adding defensive. So increased shields or armor rating sort of thing then. Yeah. And in-ship spawning is possible. Um, the, the hill will just have to work on th some things that will uh, prevent you from falling through the ship when you spawn. I have two suggestions on that. Like Make the undethinator linked to the gravity block. So auto-gravity. Yeah, when you spawn, you're automatically put in the gravity of the ship. That's one way. And uh, a second suggestion that's kind of on the topic of the whole uh, bonus thing. Uh, how about a module or a device that you could put on a ship to kind of distribute those as well within a certain radius? Distribute it? What do you mean? Kind of like to create an, uh, an area of effect bubble where you could essentially give your fleet members added shields or added mobility. Basic, yeah, basically a, a command ship, if you will. A zone support ship uh, yeah. distributes a bubble out in space and it applies the effects to all ships that may not be a part of that fleet, but allied to it. Yeah, or theoretically it could uh, we could have a logistics thing where they would throw shields, so like we have power drain and power supply beams. That's another potential use of this. Yep, except it would be radial. Versus, he, he's being... saying just simply um, yes. It, that that's a possibility. That um, is there awesome. Are, uh, <laughs> there are uh, other systems that we are we've, I've um, considered uh, setting up that would use the same thing. Um, other buff effects. Um, so using that to strengthen the same systems or to do it on their own, um, it's possible. Yeah. I 
can hear the gears in Dalmont's head turning as he's coming up with new ships. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm literally drawing as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's move on to the next question. Yeah, uh, I'm glad we got a lot of that out. That's really really cool. Um, would it be possible to have a utility that records most the most recent date that a faction member logs into the server, so that if they play at odd hours and you know you never see them, you're not gonna you know, boot them from the faction or kick them from the server so that you, you have an idea of when they've been in. Yes. That, yeah, we can definitely put that in. It's just one of those little quality of life um, fixes that uh, there's hundreds of, and in time they will all be gotten to. Best answer ever, right? All right. And uh, now this one, I can... Uh... I can attest to it being in the pre-build, but we're going to go ahead and ask it anyway. Will there be a way, a way to declare war on a certain rogue member of a faction, as opposed to being at war with the entire faction for the wrongdoings of just one person? Yes, and like you said, it's already in the pre-build. What I don't know is if this works like a... Um, do they have to be in a faction? Can you just declare war on any one person? I think we're going to have to I, do I, a uh, I, testing live stream then. I'm pretty, pretty sure that that is how it is in the in the pre-build, that you can just pick one person and declare war on them. Awesome. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some testing later on on a, uh, a dev build test live stream sort of thing. Uh, he said um, the attack neutral option now works this way as well. Um, it won't set it to attack all neutrals it'll just do the one you're currently targeting cool and you can declare war on a single player so yes awesome all right and i think the last one in this section is will there be other types of viewpoints in star made like a dog fighting perspective or a uh, capital ship perspective like i.e eve online I, I'm going to assume that this question is referring to, say, like you push a hotkey and it puts you on a chase cam or it puts you in an orbital cam, things like that. And uh, I, I guess the shorter answer is, again, just yes. That's something that we're <laughs> again, the looking to add in. But also, again, it's another one of those quality of life things and it's going to be bumped lower on the priorities than things like getting the engine running. Um, but yeah, that will be included. Best answer ever. All right, we're at the end of this section. Any comments from the peanut gallery? Oh, um, uh, from our esteemed guests. That's the one. No, that nothing. sounded so rare. What's been I said cry. cannot be unsaid, Ryben. Don't try and kid yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Delmont, do you have anything to add? Uh, actually, I think there was one question that we had that we didn't get to ask, so I'll just go ahead and throw that out there now. Uh, we were doing, uh, do you think it will be possible to create a near completely clean PvP experience, or will we always have to live with some amount of random teleportation and clunkiness? Did we run that one? Yeah, like more... Not uh, server latency or ping or anything like that. I'm I'm saying an engine. It seems that we're definitely well on our way already. Um, there's limitations to what the game can do. If you have hundred people come into the game with capital ships with five dozen, you know, turrets each, you're going to have issues. That's just the nature of what simulations do. Um. We hope to get it as uh, versatile as we possibly can, but I mean, it's, it's never going to be perfect where you can just do anything you want. Another of the limitations that comes up is not the program, but the player's computer or the server. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other, uh, anything else from you, Tom or Delmont? I think that covers it for me. <laughs> um, I've got something. Go for it, Apex. 
Along the lines of the whole uh, waging war on an individual player thing, will there ever be sort of an integrated bounty system? I imagine being able to wage war on a single player in combination with the quest system that you could easily set up bounties. That's a very good point. So mm -hmm. set quest, kill player, reward, 30 billion credits. Or faction points. I, I, I might actually be tempted to go bounty hunting if I get faction points for it. That's a very good point. Well, th there's no reason that you can't set it to reward credits or faction points. I mean, that's... It... Yeah. It, it's possible to, to set it up so that the game gives you an option to choose between faction points and credits as well. I mean, things like that, it, it's just, you know, add in a couple of lines here. It, 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 yeah. Um, I, I also forgot to mention... Uh, the, uh, sorry, the faction system is based off of the, uh, let me drag it up here so I actually get the right one. I'll have to look it up while we're going over, over other stuff, but he based the faction system on some of the stuff that we've seen from uh, the Minecraft mods, what people like having. Yeah, from um, the... He, he said it was partly inspired the faction plugin that people enjoy on Minecraft. And if I may say so, we did it, you guys did it better. <laughs> and it hey, sounds you like you're what? gonna be doing it better. It, in, in, in five years, there'll be some game around and they'll see something we did and they'll improve upon it and they'll do it better. That's just how game, do, that, that's, how, that's what games do. That's very true. What about territorial space? Like, would there ever be some sort of system whereby if you enter another faction's space, that faction is alerted? Such as player brackets in, or ship in brackets player name has entered your sector, sector number. In the same way that the little warnings come up on the top right hand side. This is a thought I had. Yeah, um, sorry. There's, uh, th there's sensors, um, like how your radar works right now, there's, we're, we're looking at expanding that, um, to have sensors, jammers, you can make a satellite that'll have sensors put on it, and if someone comes in range, you know, in the sector, that satellite can pick it up. And they can send your faction a signal or warnings, or it can activate your defenses if they don't leave within a certain amount of time. Uh, things like that. It, it should all be possible. Would it be able to issue the warning as well, saying you were in so-and-so's territory, leave now, or be fired upon? Um, I, I would think the Lua would be able to handle that sort of thing. I don't actually know. Also, um, he did... He's the way he said. Oh, sorry. Uh, another thing involving the size of your faction and how long it's been around is there actually possibly will be um, faction territories. And as your home base expands and as it's been established for a period of time, your territory will expand out from your home sector. Um, and depending on you know what uh what the level of that territory conquest is or how far out it is you'll have different options on what you can do with things like sensors Sounds good enough cool. for me so and we can you would have border sectors and then, then you might have core sectors and you can use you know some high tech, you know, defensive stuff inside your 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 core sectors, but out on the border sectors, you might not even be able to have scanners out there. 
That makes perfect sense, actually. That's what they're aiming for. Huh. All right, I think right. that actually ties in with this next section pretty well, talking about sensor buoys and maybe firing upon people that come Sorry. in. Oh, no, you're well, fine. Well, one, one last thing, uh, just because he's sure. throwing stuff at me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I forget to mention stuff. Uh, the, the territories will also, if you have territory, right? So as you build your base and your territory expands, pirate spawning within that is reduced or prevented. So as you expand your territory, you're building up a safe zone for your faction where you won't have pirates coming after you. Now that um, an idea is on that actually. Sorry to cut you off there, Ribbon. Go ahead. Instead of say pirates spawning within your territory, the faction is able to designate a single or even a small number of ships to spawn instead as a faction guard. I would imagine that would be possible. Um, there might be a something obvious like you have to spend faction points per AI ship that's generated. Right. So if you try and generate too many or too large of a ship, you're going to run out of points and now your home base is vulnerable. Also, there's a risk, risk to the same thing, which is if players destroy your AIs um, and your faction is set to replace them automatically, people could burn through your faction points even while you're offline. So th there's options there. There's things we can set up as inherent risks. We I don't know if we would include that, but... You know, you could go both ways with it. It might be, you know, a risk you could take. It might be something that you could safely do. Okay. I love that. And I actually have, uh, in, what, not this next section, but the section after that, I, I'll definitely have a question there, and I think it'll tie really well. That being said, um, no offense to everybody else, but I think we're going to end up basically revisiting this in, in not this next section, but the one after that. But I think we should get to the section that a lot of people seem to be crying out for in the chat. So, will more weapons be added in the future? If so, will they have roughly the same DPS or will they be harder to get and have higher damage? I'll be right back. Yeah, I know this is your baby. Yeah, we're... No, we're not adding any more weapons, ever. Um, you heard it here, guys. <laughs> no more weapons, period. We're done. It's a, Stop we got AMCs. <laughs> We're removing They're all weapons rid of all the, the missiles. Game. It's going to be it. a sandbox. No, um, <laughs> there's a, I, we did announce the, uh, the weapon update, but this has been a while ago, and there's been lots of new people and people that have come back that haven't seen it because it got buried in the Hold news. on one second, Cal. I'm sorry. It looks like my stream may have gone down, so we're going to... All right. All right, well, we were mostly just um, joking around, so you nobody missed anything important. I haven't answered the question yet. Um, we're on uh, whether or not there'll be more weapons in the future, how much DPS they'll have, and how hard the weapons will be to get, right? That's the one. All right, um, the weapon update is going to add two new block types. Uh, the beam weapon, which is a laser, and... Um, the mine layer which is going to act somewhat like a missile launcher but without it being propelled anywhere it'll drop you know sneaky little mines that if you run into you blow up um the missile blocks um as i will also be all condensed into one block type so it is just a missile block and its behavior will either be based on a setting um an ammo type if we add in ammo that's still something that's in the air or um, the or the missile type will be based on the combination that's chosen. So say like the sniper missile might be a bunker buster, whereas the swarm missile might always be heat seekers. Um, we haven't really decided which of these three options we're going to go with yet, so it'll be one of those. But um, you'll still have more than one type of missile. It won't just be dumb missiles. Um... There's going to be, currently, what we're going to introduce first is you'll have the five weapon blocks and a com 25 combinations of the same block. So you have 30 different, functionally different weapons. Um, the system's also modular, 
in a way that allows future additions of more block types or more block types to be added by modders or us. And um, there's lots of exciting block type possibilities using just the existing blocks we already have in the game. So I, we have looked at, you know, like what happens if you link a cannon to a shield, things like that. Um, I went out and picked out every single system block that we have and I put them up in a possible list or graph of um, interactions that we could have. So far, the only confirmed ones are the five weapon blocks combined with themselves. As for um, the damage, it's the DPS isn't set in stone right now and uh, that's because this is a good opportunity for us to balance our offense and defense and these the, the DPS and the defense numbers will likely fluctuate based on community input as we uh, start testing these. Very eloquently answered. Um, I've already seen it about a hundred times on the chat. Oh, All right. Um, I mean, sorry. Um, Schema wants me to explain the basic system of, of what the combinations actually are. What it comes good. down to is um, your weapon systems, as they are now, will continue to function as they do now. Nothing should be breaking on your ship. What will happen is when the up update comes out, the two new block types will be added. You can place those in your ship. Now you'll be able to select um, the controlling computer for one system and you'll be able to set it as a master by then you can select another weapon computer and link it to the the first computer right so just like you select a computer and then add a weapon block to it you could do the same thing you could select the weapon computer and add a slave computer to it what that will do is it takes so the secondary effects that are associated with blocks that don't normally do anything on their own. They don't. They aren't figured into the the system when it's being used solo. So, you would link that slave system. Its secondary effects now benefit the master system, and the slave system is disabled. It's no longer a functioning weapon system. You can't shoot it anymore. All it's doing is adding a bonus to the primary system. That primary system will have the the sorry the number of blocks in each system will affect the bonus that you have. So you won't be able to have one cannon block and add a million laser blocks and make that cannon block overpowered. What you're going to have is a cannon block that's slightly better than what it would have been before. You have to balance out your systems, um, making them ridiculous one way or the other you know balance wise between the the system sizes is not going to be beneficial to you it will work but what will happen is you'll get a very very tiny um buff instead of say adding the laser block increases your range right so you, you're expecting to take a giant cannon and double its range by adding one block, but that won't happen. What'll happen is it'll take that one million you know, blocks from your cannon and divide it by the one block for your laser, and that's the percentage of a distance increase you're gonna get. So what, what you're gonna want is to balance out your systems. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be equal. There, there will be a scale. Say, like, um, you want a mid-range cannon, right? You might get more DPS by setting it to be a mid-range bonus instead of a completely, um, you know, maximum range increase. So there might be incentives for having, you know, a, a 75-25, but we're just preventing things like what was said earlier where you add one block to a million block system and expect to have a double you know it, it won't double the efficiency that way sorry about that had a little issue with my job for a second that's right it happens there we go just, mind if I yep. just ask a quick random question that someone poked me in the team speak Sure. Um, 
Prime wanted to know, will there be med packs to replenish astronaut health? Yeah, be yep, that, Is it? Actually, we can go ahead and hit that right now. I, I don't, I don't uh, think this That sort of ties in with weapons. No, it's not. Yeah, it, it does sort of tie in with weapons, and I don't think it's on the list, so I'll, I'll, we'll go over it. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, there's items that we plan on adding for astronauts. Um, tentatively, armor we can add, more weapon types, um, other utility equipment, things like uh, an astrotech beam that you can hold and use resources to heal each other, um, a med pack that you can use. You know, you could go stand the on. Might be throttling me again. You could go stand on a med bay block and have that heal you up over a period of time. There's, we, we plan on having um, astronaut damage and a way to heal yourself. Various ways to heal yourself. So you know, players who want it at some point may be able to have a complete FPS PV. All right, guys. So what we're what we're doing right now is we're gonna check out. And hopefully this will start working properly. If my internet goes too bad, we will switch to the Mushroom Fleet TeamSpeak. And, or not TeamSpeak, uh, Mushroom Fleet Twitch. Simply to, you know, make everything a little bit smoother for you guys. But we're going to try to keep it here. Um, just so we don't have to move everything around. We have not yet talked about the mods so far. To rehash for those that have not been here, and mind you, I am recording every single second of this, and it will be up on my uh, my YouTube. Um, so far, we have gone through uh, general questions, uh, planets and environment, uh, PvP and factions, which was quite interesting, and we are now on weapons, power, and utility. So. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna we, we did talk about how the weapons will be used etc um, we're gonna re we're gonna start again if it's all right just a quick uh, on the med packs etc just for those because that's about when my uh, stream kind of went wonky and uh, we should be good to go from there if that sounds good to everyone else sounds like a plan you good with that Cal yeah all right. Sorry to go back a little bit, but we can just do it That's quickly, fine. and then, and then uh, everybody, uh, if you want to check out the full explanations, etc. Um, again, it will be up on my uh, YouTube after this, after I edit it. It should be up late tonight or early tomorrow. Um, as for when we get to the AI, uh, here's the order. Uh, we are doing weapons, power, and utilities. Uh, after that, we're going to be on AI and Lua. After that, we're going to be on modding. After that, turrets and docking. After that, creatures. And then crafting. And then the one that we all want to, you all seem to want to go for, FTL. I'm sorry, that's going to be our uh, our last thing here. And then we're going to have some miscellaneous questions and commentary, okay? You have no choice but to stick around. Yep. All right. It, oh, trust me, it will. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead. Um, you, uh, if we could quickly go over uh, the ability to bring people back to life, if we will. Uh, med beams. Med beams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A handheld astrotech. You know, something along those lines. You call it a med beam. It's the same effect. It heals you. Um, we, we can do that. We can have items. We can have blocks in your ship, like a med bay block. Um, there's lots of options, and we want lots of options for things that you can do so that there's a lot of versatility. Then there's things like equipment the player can have, you know, the possibility for having armor, the possibility for having more than just a pistol. You know, there's, like, we just went over a whole bunch of different weapon types. Imagine having those combinations in a weapon you know it's like hey i'm gonna build a, a rifle then i'm gonna put this and i'm gonna put this and now it's gonna do you know this so you could make some pretty unique weapons i don't know about the actual model for them but at least how they function there's um going to be a precedent for uh some modularity there from the ship weapon system um let's try that all right okay. so 
Just so you know. Just mate, tell me if it's any good. If you get too choppy, I can step in for a bit if you want and yep. get questions off. And and we very well may have to do that. Alright, well, okay, so whereabouts are we? We're under so I've got the list in front of me. Are we into A A I U I yet? No, I we're, uh, think we're still, still under weapons, weapons power, power and utility. utility. Okay, which question were you on? Second question. Uh, second what? question. Okay, so when do you expect the weapon update to come out, and what is the update after that? We don't really have an ETA on the weapon update. There's a lot of stuff we have to get done, and uh, giving any ETA is really uh, just shooting ourselves in the foot, because then everyone's oh, going to yeah. scream at us when it's not ready in time. A lot of these um, questions are sort of covered because everyone's asking them, but I understand the soon trademark, so... Yeah, unfortunately, it, it, it'll it happen. That's what it'll be. And it'll happen in a time frame that'll make it worthwhile so you won't be disappointed in the system instead of giving it to you halfway finished and just ruining the experience for you. Yeah. Or um, me. Afterwards, after that update, there is the quest system. There's fully implementing the fauna system, universe design, better AI, programmable AI, and many other things. Excellent. All right, well, I think we'll move straight on because it's a little bit ambiguous, that last question. Um, but thanks for, anyway for, the, for the answer. Uh, let's have a look now. Uh, will we have different types of energy providers, i.e. Technical, technological research, to have better energy modules, thus allowing for faster or new thrusters? Yeah, um, we're working on that. We have some plans. And uh, we'll we'll have to see how how things go as uh, as we add in new systems like the weapon systems. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about energy providers? I have no idea what I that know, even means. It's, I know. I know. I think they does might it mean, mean different it mean types like of blocks? propulsion. I think they might mean different. The power types generators of and yeah. the power tanks are current energy blocks. Mm, okay, if it means thrusters, weird. then the directional yeah. thrusters would be really cool. Well, I think that gets addressed in the next question. But at the moment, what this is about is, you know, if we if we have power blocks right now, will there be, say, nuclear power or something like that? Um, added for larger ships, etc. I think that's I think that the, the the main goal of that question. Right. Well, to start, for solar panels, which is something many people ask for as a basic system, yeah. are planned. Excellent. Um, that's beautiful. More, more powerful systems than the, uh, the generator we have in game right now. I don't know if we want to be adding more power than that. It seems like a good top-end system. But we could have low-end power types and intermediates. Um, it's possible we could add more powerful regen systems if we need to. And uh, that, I mean, we could add in a bunch of different types of power generation. It's it's something that we we'd like to have. It's it's more options. It's more customization that the players can have. But we have to fit it into the balance and uh, the workings of the game. Just adding a nuclear reactor because it's cool but then having it break a bunch of mechanics in the game or ruin the game experience isn't something we want. But it's nuclear, and that's cool. Okay, well, moving on to the next question, then, unless anyone else has anything to say on that one. Nope. Um, he did say that a, a kind of boost system is also possible. This is outside of the faction um, point boost that you were talking about. Okay. And... Um, I like what people are suggesting there, how nuclear power could have sort of a downside and that they will explode and destroy everything. <laughs> yeah. You could also have it have a downside of requiring fuel. And radiation, <laughs> you could slowly remove your health. <laughs> if you go too close to it and don't have hull between you and the reactor, you die. The, there's lots of options, that's what it comes down to. Start to mutate. Start to mutate. I like the explosion idea, to be honest, that would be... I mean, it would be a new and interesting way to kill a ship rather than just, ooh, shoot the core till it dies. Now, hit the reactor, yep. watch the whole yep. thing blow, take out everything in the sector. Now, since since we're on PvP stuff, um, I, I will go ahead and address that. Ship coring is not going to be a function of uh, 
in the future. Hitting the core won't just destroy the ship. Nice. Um, what will? Sorry if that's a bit forward, but uh, yeah, I'm just curious. Like, if not the core, then what mechanics are going to be? Do you have to oh, no, no, a no, certain no. percentage? Uh, uh, I, I we, we can talk about it. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts because this wasn't one of the planned questions, so yeah. I don't want to stumble yeah, over hey, myself. You went off track, not me. I take no responsibility. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring this on yourself a little. <laughs> sorry for going off the script, guys. It's all right. Wait, sorry for script? giving you more info. That's okay. What um, we're gonna do? Now, yeah, carry on. Carry on. Sorry. This. Uh, I'm just going to cover the, the whole damage thing because yep. everyone complains about coring and this is just a, a system I'm working on. It's not in the game. It, we can't promise it'll work or that it'll, it will be used. But tentatively, instead of having the, the ships being destroyed when the core gets hit, you will have an amalgamated HP based on the blocks you have in your ship. So adding armor will increase the HP of your ship, right? Yeah. Um, when a block gets destroyed, that HP is reduced. Then you can use percentages of your ship's health to have different effects happen. Blackouts, brownouts, that say at you know 10%, um, you have a meltdown timer start, things like that. This way, you, the people aren't specifically trying to hit your core, and it's not a giant Achilles heel on your ship. Right. So if a missile hits your ship, it could take out propulsion. If a missile hits your ship, it's going to take out whatever it hits. What will happen what is, happened? say, if your ship gets damaged down to 70%, this is just random numbers, you may yeah. have you may a, a reduction in energy just ship-wide, or you may have a reduction in your propulsion ship-wide as just an effect. Aside from what they've actually hit with their uh, with their weapons, um, it, it's something to point out is your HP will be set when you build it. When you leave build mode, or when you leave, you know wherever you built your ship. Say if you build it at a dock, um, you it won't change. So if you modify your ship in a battle, right? If you think that you can just add 500, you know, whole blocks onto the backside of your ship just to give yourself some bonus hit points because you're getting low, it won't work. It, you won't get extra hit points during a battle like that. So you go into a fight, you have a thousand hit points, you're going to have a thousand hit points during that fight. Right. And any kind of patch job would basically be just that, a patch job to, say, cover up a critical system that got exposed in the course of battle. Because I like arcade and the way it's all blocks. Makes sense. It's kind of cool. It's like a 3D game of Space Blocker. Don't know if you remember that one. <clears throat> Arcadia or whatever it's called. Arcania. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next question. Ah, uh, we covered thruster overhaul. You might want to say Not something yet. about that. We, we haven't that. that. Okay, so the thruster overhaul, directional bonus by Did design. Did a video, however. Yeah, with varied agility. That's what's on my list. So. Right. Sorry. Um, patch jobs will only be repairing, not adding. So, like, you can use an AstroTech beam, and um, that can repair blocks that were already placed on your ship. If you add new blocks, what that is going to do, it's going to reset your HP mark. And if you've taken damage, that's going to essentially lower your HP mark um, without adding any significant amount, right? So you may be at 100% HP again, but your HP is still 500 points less than it was when you started. So you're not really improving things by patching. Um, what you're going to want to do is use AstroTech Beams to repair your ship. And with this HP system, AstroTech Beams will be able to repair missing blocks and damaged blocks because the game will be tracking that. Okay, that sounds really cool. Sorry, I'm just throwing in stuff before we get to the next question. Um, the thruster overhaul. Again, yes, we're working on a plan for that. I believe this is one that we've talked about previously, and I have to put in another, you know, cautionary note. These are plans; they're not guaranteed to be in the game yet. Um, for thrusters, we, I was looking at 
having the directional settings. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. The three, you have your three ship axes, X, Y, and Z. You have plus and minus in each direction. So you have six different directions that you can split your thrust into. So you'll put the thruster blocks on your ship. They'll be omnidirectional, right? So there's no putting left-facing thrusters or right-facing thrusters. They, they can push you in any direction because they're special like that. Yeah. <laughs> they're high-tech. They're not, um, they're not rockets. You yeah. can add decorative blocks that will emulate rockets, something we've discussed adding in, just like the weapon systems will have graphic effects. Yeah. We can add in the same type of blocks that just have graphic effects for engines or like lightning bolts or whatever kind of cool stuff you want to add to your ship. Mm. But back to the thrusters. You'll have you'll have all the thrusters on your ship will combine to a total like newtons, right? The number amount of thrust it can do just like it does now. Yeah. It can push you in any direction just like it does now. The difference is you have to preset what directions your percentage of thrust will go to. Right. So you have, let's say you have 100% of your thrust. You can put 50% towards your forward. You can put 10% towards every other direction, right? This way you can move in every direction. And Is this calculated you can move from the core position? Out of interest. Uh, um, or from the center now, of an array? It could be done from the center of an array. As is, it would be done from the core position. There's right. an option to add to move that location. I don't know how hard that would be. Yeah. So I, I can't really answer a that. A bit like with power, you obviously the center of an array isn't, it's just the center, isn't it? Yeah. Now, th what it'll be is when, say when you're building your ship, you will have an option to set like the percentages of your thrust, right? Yep. So you can split your thrust up, you put 50% forward and 10% in every other direction. What that will do is 50% of the newtons that you get from your thrust will apply to your forward direction and only to your forward direction. So say, you know, in the, how to put it, you know, like the ratios everyone goes for right now, right? Yeah, you just go for power if you're, to weight. It, it, if your total thrust ratio is two times what your mass is, yep. Right, so you have two to one ratio with this new percentage system and using the 50% forward like I just said, that would give you a one to one ratio and a one fifth to one for all your other directions. The other half of this system is that the same percentage points that you're assigning your thrust with will also assign a percentage of the maximum server speed. This is where we will be di differentiating fighters from capital ships because fighters are going to be more focused on one directional thrusting. So they, in general, will have a higher maximum speed. They'll put more percentage into their forward thrust or whatever direction they choose to go with because they have the agility to change direction and continue using that forward thrust in a new direction. Whereas a capital ship is going to be turning far more slowly and will want to keep a more balanced um, max speed in every direction. While at the same time, this system allows players to do whatever they want with it. So we're not directly crippling anyone, but we're adding in um, side effects for going with certain setups. Right. Awesome. Does anybody want to say anything about that? Anybody? Questions, questions, It's questions. pretty cool. There's, it, it is a very novel concept. I'm mulling over how it can be applied to different ship types and designs in my head right now. I like how it's going to actually differentiate between capitals and fighters. Because at the no, moment, no. there's not much differentiation whatsoever. Yeah. Th th this is also tied in with tweaking several other systems, like acceleration in missiles, acceleration in ships. Um then, you know, so it, it's not just you accelerate on a linear curve. It might get harder and harder to go faster as you get closer to the maximum server speed. The Just little things we can tweak here and there to make it all work better. Also, whether as a separate percentage or sharing the same thrust percentage again, there's the option to um, do the same thing with your turn rates 
to give um, you know RCS effects, basically boosting the turn rate of a fighter in a particular direction or of a capital ship in a particular direction. If we tie that in with our thrust settings, that allows you to increase the turn rate of a large ship at the detriment of its losing thrust and maximum speed in its directional movements. Awesome. So, it's a trade-off. It's it doesn't mean I, there's more meta to the block than just slapping down a load anywhere. I, I kind of like that. And a lot of people are asking for some kind of directional thrust, and this sort of caters to both arguments. Yes, this lets you slap them down anywhere, but then you have to decide how they're being used. So, build-wise, it's simple. Um, setting it up after you build it, there's some complexity there. Because there are games which do have that realistic flight space model, but I think sometimes that's restrictive in the creativity because it just doesn't fly straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it's also restrictive it's also... in the scalability because doing the math to calculate um, the weight and thrust amounts at different points in the ship is just adding even more for the server to track. That's more information being moved around. That's more lag. So we're emulating so, it, hopefully in a fun um, manner. I have an idea. Um, you know how when you you use the C and V keys to connect computers to weapon blocks and all that. Yeah. What if you connect and connected an engine group to a like a lava uh, block group or a nice uh, block group to make it act as the actual thrust detail? But you connect it, and then that gets brighter with applied thrust. Oh, so you mean the thrust of the block when it's in use would activate the R function? You know, so whatever you attack with, so I, I, I ah. think I get what he means. So that, like, yes, um, no. so you could attack you, a mean, cosmetic like, block to trigger. Yeah, like you actually oh. use it as cosmetic. Okay, you know, with the uh, thruster effects we have now, yeah, they, they get brighter yeah, the faster they, you go. When, yeah, they, they would. Yeah, if you connect a thruster group. To an ice block group, It'll flicker the ice as well. block group as well. starts at no light output, but then gets brighter and brighter the faster you go. Or, f or just flickers on and off. That would still work That's for me. Cool. But yeah, yeah. yeah. The the variable lighting would be a graphical effect from the potential decorative blocks that I mentioned. Yeah. Having just the ice crystals or the lava or just regular lights turn on and off based on your thrust is the group lighting controlled by the activation block that yeah. we discussed earlier. Yeah, it is. We that could handle activation that. Block. Yeah, true, because you could attach the activation block to your decoration block and to so, your well, thrust block. <laughs> basically, Wait. yes, Ooh, there's wow. two possible ways of doing what you're asking for, and I think both of them will hopefully be in the game. Cool. So, so wait, so, did I just come up with a good idea? You did. Wow, that's you, never you, happened you came ever. up with you came up with something based on things that are going to be in the game. Which yes. is excellent. Yay. So you'll be able it's to like have that fun implementing them soon. Trademark. I, had, like I, had, I had not considered using, you know, lights that turn on and off, whether based on whether you're thrusting, mm. but with what we're serious? adding, that will be a possibility. Now. We'll be able to do it. So, that's a possibility. So I think we'll exactly. probably move on to the next section now. So Quick question before we move on. Oh, sorry, can Ivan. Can y'all actually on. hear me? Yes, we can hear you, mate. Okay, I just reset my internet. Okay. Um, hopefully I'll be able to actually take part in this conversation again. I know, we were wondering, we were, we were missing you, bro. Yeah, unfortunately, my internet likes to throttle me. Oh, A lot. Well, um, yeah. are we ready to move on to the next section? Do you reckon that's a good one? Uh, I'll, I'll, um, throw, I'll, I'll throw in one thing, just because yeah. I saw someone mentioned it. They were talking about Afterburner. Y yeah. Um, by tweaking the thrust setting so that you're at a percentage, it is possible to add an afterburner effect with a high cost that would push you up to 100% thrust in a nice. particular direction. Yeah, nice. We would, we would make that a percentage of a percentage basis. So like if you only have 1% thrust to the left, you can't just kick on an afterburner and suddenly go 100% to the left. You might get a 100% increase of whatever percentage you have. So you would get up to 2% going to the left. That sort of thing. So, like, if you have 50% going forward and you kick on the afterburners, you might suck up three times the power you normally would, but you could double your forward speed. Is that going to be an active block in the hotbar? Is that that, or is it just a passive mechanic that 
will be eventually. I, I honestly have no idea what we're going to do yet. Okay, okay. No worries. All right. So this this is just me throwing out ideas in response to, to people in the chat. That's cool. I'm seeing this yeah. stuff in the chat, but a lot of it is like that. A lot of it gets answered by other people in the chat. So except. Oh yeah, Omni likes your idea. By the way, Apex. <laughs> I know. I'm seeing it in the chat. Hooray for me! So uh, we're going to move on to the AI and Lua section now. Uh, Lua means moon. Okay, it's not L U A. Um, and just in case anybody's interested, you can you can go check it out at uh, lua.org, and you can learn all about Lua, which is, I believe, an open source scripting format. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert on it, but um, and if you want to yeah. check out Luna, just stand outside and look up for a while, and you'll see this big white orb. And there you go. And that's why the logo is what it is. So then. With that being said, what what are your uh, thoughts on AI and Lua? So, question one. Yeah. Um. No, I mean, there's a guy in chat on the stream called Kaim, and he's asking for ponies. Oh, okay. No. Well, we're talking about AI and Lua right now, so wait for the creatures section. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what do you expect people are going to be using the AI for? Is the question. Well, th those are those are some of the basic tasks. Yes. Um, then uh, there's some simple fleet options like formations, follow, guard. You know, patrolling. Yeah, I've seen some of those. They're good. Um, it, it the AI is going to be able ideally to do what the Bobby is already doing. Um, yeah. We're going to try and phase the Bobby out and use the AI crew. To do right. things and the bobby ai will be a luxury feature mm -hmm. since it's just a block that you place and it doesn't have some you know person wandering around that may or may not have you know oxygen needs things like that um, that's going to spawn a lot of questions <laughs> i'm sure it is but they'll likely have to wait till the next question and answer we've got 30 seconds until the chat explodes so uh um schema says the ship ai will use the same function as the uh as Dave. Right. Whoops. So that would mean, if you'd like to, because, you know, people will probably immediately be thinking, but I only got five crew members and I've got 20 turrets, so how can I put crewmen in, and, for example? Think of your crewmen like an away team. They're the ones you can actively control. What you can do with your other crew members is you can set them to a task and leave them to it they'll continue doing that task as long as they're alive and the task is there for them to, to do. The the active crew members, the five that you're limited to, they're kind of like your the the away team that runs around with you. If you get in a firefight, they're going to be in a firefight with you. Yep. So if you leave Dave salvaging a planet, go off to eat your lunch, forget about it, and log in the next day, there might be no planet left. Yeah. Or he might stop when his inventory is full, whichever is scripted for, I guess. Actually, I would assume he would stop when his inventory is full <laughs> because that is a limitation that's going to be implemented. You won't have infinite stacks. Right. But then if you have a ship comprised of Plex storage, is, is he going to be able to put his stuff in a Plex storage or will he, you know, or do you have to script that yourself or is, you know what I'm saying? Because with it being open, that implies people can write their own for modded servers and such or whatever, you know. I, I would imagine he could put stuff in a Plex storage. Hmm, because then, yeah, you've got macro miners in a box. <laughs> you know. So that's interesting. Um, and yeah, obviously repairing your ship. You've already dropped the bomb earlier, but nobody noticed that uh, the repair beam will replace blocks. Did I hear that right? You better slap me if I'm wrong. Um, that's only for a system that Cal is working on himself that may never end up in the game. Fair enough, so that's right. not... But with planned. that system, ideally, yeah. it, it, what will happen is you'll have an Astrotech beam, right? Yeah. You get hit by a missile, it takes out a chunk of blocks. Mm. You, the, now, the Astrotech beam can't just shoot itself or shoot the ship. It's going to have to be on a turret or be on a separate ship entirely. Hmm. But what can happen is you can have an inventory linked to that Astrotech beam. So like, it will take it like will the take the missing the blocks. Hmm. It, it would be like um, how to it wouldn't be the actual blueprint of your ship. Oh you don't gosh. have to save it. 
Yeah, it would be a cache. That's a good word for it. Yeah. It's it's a block placement cache. Yeah. And it's determined when you leave build mode or Got when yeah. you would leave like a, a, a station, right? Like you yeah. go to a station, you go to a dry dock, you tell it, hey, this is what I want my ship to be like when it gets repaired. Yeah. It will save that as a cache. That's what your HP will be based on. When you get hit, you'll lose HP. Those blocks will be removed. But the Astrotech will know where to place those blocks when they get replaced. Right. It will replace the blocks, and then it will they'll either be fully repaired when they're placed, or they'll be replaced at a low health percentage, and it will then have to heal them up as well. Oh, yeah. um, that's, that's minor stuff. Like whether or not which of those two options goes, it does, we don't know yet. That's great. That sounds excellent. So repairing a ship will actually take power, it'll take time, and it'll take blocks. Right. There's also the the, op the same option at a station. Say you have a trashed ship, right? Yep. You manage to limp back to your home base. You could go to a, a repair dock, a space dock, and dock your ship and have it use faction inventory blocks to use um, Astrotech beams and repair your ship back to full functionality. Awesome. Because a lot of people ask for that functionality. Um... So, I mean, yeah, okay, cool. Does anybody want to add anything on that one? I'm trying not to, I'm trying not, I'm trying so hard not I'll to jump something. in and add things myself, you know. I'll add something to it. Um, yeah. Just as you can repair, ideally, now this is at the repair dock, you're not able to salvage ships in combat. But okay. ideally at a repair dock, say if you have a trash ship and you don't want it anymore, Yep. You could conceivably tell it to do the opposite Drag of repairing, it in which and is suck just it up. disassemble your ship. Beautiful. Then you then you get the blocks or you get the credits. Apex is scrapyard in Nullsec. <laughs> yep. You could have okay, a crusher. Apex is scrapyard. Slightly on that concept and disassemble up. ship. A ship crusher. That sounds Inside excellent. Inside or within the realm of normal star made, not just this concept that you've been well, for lack of a better phrase, cooking on your own time, um, would we be able to have salvage beams linked to a chest instead of dumping into our inventory, or would we have to get out of our ship or something and then dump the, our inventory? Salvage beams are planned to be linked to chests. Beautiful. They're also going to demand power. Oh, beautiful. Um, oh. Stack sizes Wonderful. are going to be limited. So this is going to prevent or make it a lot more difficult to make these giant planet-eating ships because yeah. that amount of salvaging is going to far exceed anyone's power supply. And you'll over I will them. see more salvage turrets in the future. So can, uh, can I, can I quit mouse? something out? Guys, um, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear three people at once. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, so cargo asking? adds mass. Um, that's something we've talked about. Because it would make a lot of sense, to be honest, when you think about it. All right, um, Scheme is saying the uh, the linking system used for weapons will yep. also be used for linking salvage to inventory. So, a uh, side effect of my idea is that something we've wanted is going to be possible. Okay, that is beautiful. I, I've, I've wanted that for a long time as well because it's it makes sense. Can I put something out? Yeah. I don't know if this is still in effect, but in the earlier versions when I first started fiddling with salvage ships, salvage beams would actually either add power or decrease the amount of power used by engines. Oh, really? I never noticed that. I never noticed that. Yeah, my ship was um, underpowered but like over thrusted, so it drained through the power, but if I flew whilst firing the salvage beams, it would drain power slower. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> Well, um, just sort of uh, going back, I was going to ask you, but didn't, and then like three people did. So, with this whole um, sh uh, ability to deconstruct ships, smash repair ships, would that also imply an ability to have a shipyard type structure which could effectively build your ships instead of them just, and I quote, hoofing in? Yes, that's. Um, I, I've talked. Or I, I've talked with Schema about possibilities for having a space dock, building ships, repairing ships, mm. um, disassembling ships. It, it's a possibility. Um, it's another one of my harebrained ideas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But this one's... It, it has some 
obvious things like he wants docks you know they they exist already um you have station docks so i'm just trying to add some logical functionality to them well uh does anybody else have anything to add on this this question i want to move through them a little bit quicker NPC I think. Uh, sorry what npc doctors like they basically repay you you got like they just yeah, uh, that that would be NPCs using the the astronaut repair systems like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, just I having an NPC so, yeah. do the same thing. So that's good. So yes, I, I would see those. Okay. Um, as far as what we're looking at, uh, the the blocks in storage, like you have you know a thousand holes yeah. in your uh, in your plex storage, that won't add mass to a ship, but you will have limited stack size, so. I mean, like, you, you won't be able to have infinite amount of blocks on oh, a ship right. anymore. Yeah, yeah. I see what but, you're saying. But it, it, it will only add the mass of the Plex storage system itself. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I can't wait to see my army of Dave clones set to work on a planet salvaging useless red rock. That'll be good. Is that really what he's called? What, Dave? Yeah, of course it is. Dave. It's official. Why not something like Leslie? <laughs> Just like the Dave. default skin in Minecraft is Steve. We called ours Weginald. Weginald? <laughs> yeah. It yeah, just, I like that, Weginald. Yeah. He was on the bridge. Uh, I'm Jonathan Watts, he was Weginald. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next question, if anyone else, quickly, before I do. Is, um... Nope. Okay, so then, uh, what parts of the game do you imagine being programmed in a released version of StarMade? You talked about crews, but about things like factories, drones, and turrets. I think we might have covered factories. don't know. Programmable. I, s I, I swear we have different lists. I think someone needs to link me with the updated list, because uh, I'm running off what we had last night, so somebody link it to me. Please. <laughs> Because otherwise I'm going to be asking questions no one's heard of. <laughs> Anybody? Sorry, I, I can answer that one, but you'll you'll have to go over it again because. Have I, you have you yeah. got the if you got one which is on you know on a link? Could you send it what what you have in front of you to me? Because obviously what I have is. Uh, I, th I think someone just changed. It. Thank you very much, my friend. Right then. And now this makes right, a lot of sense. Right, but what what was that question again, though? Um, just because it's already been asked. That question was programmable factories, drones, and turrets like crews. I think, to be honest, after reading it, we probably covered it, which is why it's not on the list. Oh, it got reworded to make it make more oh, sense. Oh, no, there is an answer in here for that one. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's what I'm saying. It, it, um, I'm getting all thrown around here. Sorry, bud. There is an answer right, here. The, Sorry, mate. The goal is to make it as customizable as possible without putting... Um, a negative, uh, or without putting uh, the performance and scalability in danger. So we, we want to be able to add options for what the AI can do, but if you have 10,000 crew members on a ship, it's going to negatively affect things. Right? If you program the computer to ram every planet it comes across, it's going to negatively affect things. We're going to try and not um, cater to that sort of thing. Not saying that it's directly prevented but like don't have an option in the lua saying ram planet gotcha yeah don't ram planet that would be a good uh, ai rule i'd have all of mine set to that so <laughs> <laughs> okay so actually that 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 is a good ai setting to uh not approach a planet closer than a certain distance that would prevent a lot of just uh, hold position AIs having <laughs> when issues. you reach it see i've seen something stop <laughs> have you have have you ever seen, um, now, have you ever had a flight of ice ants tailing you and a good trick to get rid of them is to uh, buzz over a planet, right? They'll drop down because they don't know how to fly up. Mm. So they'll they'll crash land on the planet. And you oh, keep I going. thought it was always uh, they didn't have the thrust to get out. But uh, yeah. they don't know to fly up when in a gravity field. They have the right. thrust. They just the AI. They're trying to fly forwards is, and just grinding. Yeah, they're not smart enough. Right. Okay. Right then. So uh, next question: Will the AI ever board us? Uh, included. Will boarding ships be expanded upon? So, grav boots and hull-cutting lasers. 
that that's more astronaut equipment and uh hopefully yes we will have ai and even player systems like that okay uh, i'm glad i finally found the same question so we should be able to pick up the pace a little bit um, um will there ever be an autopilot that allows you to auto fly to the designated waypoint yes that's a definite possibility and many people ask for it so okay uh once the lu uh, lua support is fully integrated could i script say a single player mass effect parody game inside starmade sorry um yeah, I mean, the things like that are the ultimate goals where you can emulate different sci-fi experiences or make up your own. Um, yeah. And then there will be the default star-made sci-fi experience. Like full RPG conversions from familiar franchises. Fully well, I wouldn't say full, but very good Clips. mock-ups. Yeah, enough for role-play um, role use. Yeah, Like a sandbox voxel version of the X series. I okay. think the stream chat is on the verge of crying for do, uh, straight up removal of asteroids from Starmate because they just don't seem to get the hint that asteroids are not the cause of lag or corruption. Mm, no. Yeah, un unless you modify uh, an asteroid, it's part of the sector generation, which is really low on the performance hit. So unless you have someone flying around shooting, modifying, and being every asteroid they see, it's not going to be a huge data hit. And when you're not in a sector, it goes inactive after a time and is saved in your server storage. Hmm. So the amount of asteroids causing impact is really, really low. Most of the impact on the server is from player ships being in close proximity and being very large. Um, I would like to just go out on a wing at this point and say that if anyone does find anything, bug reports. There's a manual reporting tool in your install folder. You can run that at any time. Um, just make sure you put a little note in the chat log so that Schema knows what you're referring to when you're referencing the bug you found. Yes, that's, that's the entire point of having an open alpha is for you guys to find these bugs and report them. Because that's what we I do. know it's fun for people to play, but the reason it's an open alpha is to get the bugs found and solved. Yeah, so like I say... And, and just saying it's broken, fix it, doesn't help us. Tell us what breaks. Write a remark in chat, like Tamino said, to help Schema find out where it's at. Send in bug reports. You don't have to wait for the game to crash. You can go into your StarMade folder. There's an executable called bug report. You can launch that and it will bring up the same bug report menu. You can even do a bug report when something is working strangely, but still working. Or even if it works correctly and he wants confirmation that it is working. To clarify, you don't even like, have to shut the game down. You can do it there and then. Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on. Um, so, can we expect more challenging AI as well as more diversity? An idea that has been suggested is scaling AI up in difficulty as you get farther from the spawn. Yes. The, the, the distance AI is also something that Schema has wanted to do for a while as a natural progression as you play through the game, things get more difficult. Excellent, I like so that. You, at spawn you may easily be able to get away with a five block, you know, a little scout ship. But as you know, once you reach a hundred sectors away, mm. you might want to be running around with a crew, um, a battleship, maybe some escort fighters, whatever. This is in game kinda mm. like you, all the backup support you'll want. So you could have a deep null for combat and it's like five hundred sectors out, it only spawns the biggest pirates or something. And lots of them. Are there plans? <laughs> Are there plans for yeah, bigger yeah, um, default um, pirates? Sorry, Apex? He... I'm saying, are there plans for bigger default pirates? Because at the moment, Isons are, you know, they're scary for half an hour, but... You can then, make your own you now, well, aren't you? So it's sort yeah, of Yeah, currently, currently you can make your own, and the way the game works by default is that every ship you save, pirates have access to. Most people turn that off because they don't want pirates to have access to their ships. Yeah. But that was the original logic, was that as you made more difficult ships, the pirates had access to them, and you were forced to progress to continue to counteract that. Yeah. Um, but 
yes, pirates will become more difficult, not just in their AI capabilities, but in the size of the... Re- um, w- w- we should be able to add in more ship sizes for the default AIs besides just the, the, the ISAM, so that, say, once you're at a point where you can be fighting battleships at the right area, battleships will spawn for the pirates to fight you default battleships that aren't taking any player um, blueprints now the, uh, the the AI difficulty also again ties in with when you start a faction and you're, as you expand your territory the difficulty of the AI close to your faction is going to be lowered so having a large base will make things easier in that area it'll be easier to mine it'll be safer to do things for your faction members Right. Okay. Anybody want to say anything on that? Um, Not to interrupt. I have but... one question oh, regarding sorry, Zero, pirate quickly. ships and AI controlled ships and such. Uh, hang on a sec, Zero. Sorry. What was that, Riven? Quickly. You said you needed to interrupt us. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that y'all could hear me. I think my stream is back up. I think I fixed my internet. Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't mind handing back open. over to you for a bit if you want to do that. Am I nearly oh, at the end um, of the section? Yeah, I'm nearly at the end, so I can pass you yep. back for my. I'll let you, you finish want. this one out. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, sure. And Zero, what were you going to say, my friend? Um, my question is um, pertaining to AI-controlled ships. Will we eventually have the ability to set different ships for use by trading guild than pirates, or are they both going to be forced to use the same ships? I. This is something I, I've mentioned with Schema is I. I think me, myself, other people, it, it's just logical to want a um, a folder that you could set up for the trade the, guild. For any <laughs> NPC guild. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then you can upload blueprints to specific NPC guilds. Yeah. They would have a difficulty le- well, level be based on their mass. The, so the, yeah. the, the, every NPC faction would have uh, uh, they'd have a divided set of blueprints of NPC skins. Um, yeah. I guess the answer is yes, but it wouldn't be yeah. just trade and just pirates. Say if you're on a server and you want Klingons, Romulans, and you know You can have as many factions as you want. In the end, I, I think that would be something we would aim for. Again, I can't speak for Schema. I haven't actually asked him this, but I, I don't see why you couldn't just add another faction in your uh, server setup. That's beautiful. I think that's a really elegant way of doing it, and you'll probably see people releasing fleet-themed packs for server owners to just chuck oh, on. Oh, I hope so. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Um, uh, so with that being said, um, I'm just going to say we're going to be doing the modding section next. We've got the turrets and docking, creatures, crafting, FTL, and many things more slated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand back over to Ryben. Um, mainly what I do is YouTube. So obviously um, I'm, I'd like to, you know, Ryben's our streaming man of the hour. So what we're going to be doing is passing you straight back over there. The link's going to be going in the chat. He is live right now. And, do we uh, have a dual stream link for? There is a dual stream. I think link. that'll be yeah, a better it's, uh, way to do it. Yeah, and I, I think the masses don't believe you, Cal, when you say Sorry, asteroids yeah. don't cause lag by the by default. I I really can't get into an argument over that. I don't know anything. I'm just I'm going just looking at the um, chat and just kind of laughing at him. Yeah, if you if you go around crashing into asteroids, it's the same as crashing into a ship. So you like, know it's going to um, cause some slowdown. <laughs> uh, it, it, like we've been talking about, uh, the, the, we mentioned earlier how the the universe is set up. There's going to be a universe um, generation rehaul. Mm-hmm. Things are going to be done differently. You won't have asteroids floating in every sector anymore. It's not going to be an issue. Whether or not it currently is, it won't be in the future. So, moot point. Oh, by the way, just to people, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to be doing exactly what I'm doing now, but obviously, Riven is going to be uh, taking over at this point. Are you ready, mate? Oh, I am. Oh, I'm excellent. Ready. Right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Hand over to you then, sir. Can I? Thank you much. If you want to leave your uh, sound up just in case yep. uh, we have any issues, no problem. That would be awesome. 
Can I throw something out while we're talking about the, sure. uh, the planet, the, the the universe generation again? There is the plan to have the larger planets as well as the two-sided planets. And um, hopefully when things like that come along, there may be more focus put into things like ground vehicles or even allowing ships to be used as ground vehicles. I know there's some mini games involving that. Um, right now with the planets how they are, there's not a lot of point to ground vehicles because you can just roll a ship core and you know two seconds later you're at the other side of the planet so there's there's a, a lot that uh, is, is going to be coming including increased planet size I'm done Sounds sorry awesome and again I, I, hey you here all right uh, I want to I want to apologize to everyone unfortunately my internet hates me um, and it may go down again, so keep both streams open if you, if it's possible. If you guys want to watch on Mushroom Fleet, it will probably be the more stable, but I am going to run this for as long as I possibly can. Um, if any sound issues pop in, tell me. All right, uh, let's move on to the thing I think I've seen in the chat the second most so far today, modding. So, do you guys plan to allow modders to mod the game? We already allow it, we just don't directly support it. Um, it's not because we don't want them, it's just that directly supporting modding right now would slow things too much at this state in the game development. Um, there's just a lot that's going to be changing. Yeah, yeah. I've and... always said that it's if you're going to be running a third party app on an alpha gap platform, you better be ready to rewrite your program tomorrow because you're kind of asking for trouble. Yeah, you're kind of asking for it. So you know, all power to the people the, to the people that do. <clears throat> I know Smedit, the guy at Smedit, he does a great job. There's a few other little app developers and bits and pieces. Um, sorry if I missed you. If you're a guy out there that's developing on Starmate and I didn't give you a mention, um, but get in touch is the bottom line. <laughs> but yeah, so moving forward, uh, it's going to be great to see what happens. But I think they should take that as a red. Yeah, putting mods into an alpha is a lot like putting an NVIDIA 7, GTX 770 into a computer that only has a 500 watt um, thing with trigger power supply. You're going to break things. Especially oh. until it's all st stabilized later on. Yeah, though. that's the best analogy I can come up with. You're probably going to blow it up. I think, I, th I think the answer to anybody who wants to do modding is yes but later. And also, I think it would be great to point out that there is actually uh, an open source project, which somebody linked already in the chat earlier today. I don't know if it's uh, still up there, but I'll see if I can find it, and I'll link it in the chat. So if you're a, a modder, developer, and you want to make some cool stuff, get in touch with all the other guys that are also doing that. Because, uh, you know, moving forward, you'll know all the people you need to know. And when it's a thing, you can just do it. Um, but obviously we, we do already have a mod block thing, and you can do a lot actually with, with StarMade as is right now. We're also trying to add in as much um, functional customization built into the game as we can. Um, ideally this would prevent the need for a lot of modding, you just have to tweak things that you want, you know, add your custom textures, design the ship to look how you want it. You don't have to mod to have a Star Trek ship, but you just build it that way. Yep. But yes, um, modding is something that we will encourage more as the game becomes more stable in its features. And actually, I think that answers the second question on this list, so I figure... We well, I think the, the, second, almost, huh? the, the second question is a specific one, um, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. All right, is an API planned for modding? And yes, an API is planned for StarMade once its features are completed. Not just supporting mods, but we plan to have an API just because we've all seen how frustrating not having an API can be as updates come out in uh, another block-oriented game. <laughs> no mentioning no names. No names. Yeah. Mention here. All right. So I think does anybody else have anything else to add at the end of this? Somebody just mentioned non-Euclidean shipbuilding. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were saying the Shows are never going to add non-Euclidean shipbuilding. And some may, be, some may be like, hey, that would be awesome. Yeah, you definitely need to bring it to the lineup review on Wednesday night. <laughs> it would be interesting to see. Um, no, he's saying um, the devs are never going to add it. Yeah, well, if he can do it anyway, I'm sure it could be done. Anything can be done in this game. Just how, how can you have a non-geometric shape? That's kind of tough. Dude, don't <laughs> you knew who knew? All right, on next Thursday, up is turrets and docking, guys. No, 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 no. In college, yeah, I'm hearing about that for five hours a day. Don't you dare mention the eleven dimensions. All right. Yep. Yep. Just, just thinking that about it, it hurts. It I'll be right. All right, here we go. Turrets and docking. How will docking for both ships and turrets change in the future? Will be able to. Will we be able to choose how each turret is docked or oriented? Yes. Um, specific docking controls and custom orientation is planned. Um, I've also discussed the possibility with schema of implementing power demands for things like turrets, so that actually using the turret has a detriment, which gives a slight advantage to the player out there using a fighter. It's an option. Um, there's no guarantee that it's going to be implemented, whether you like it or dislike it. Fair enough. I That's an interesting concept. It would give the fighters a little bit better of a or a little bit more of a chance, in, uh, in a way, anyway. It, it's a minor detail, but I mean, like, do you really want to just see a ship that is running around with 200 cannons on it? I mean, it, and just... Yeah. A fighter you need a, you need has a to... Uh, what, no, what this is, is, say, a fighter has to invest power into their thrusters to use their agility to turn, right? Um... I think that a turret should also require a power drain to be able to turn and rotate. It, it, just, it, it makes sense to me. I don't know if other people will agree with it, but as far as balance goes, I think they should both drain power. If one does, why shouldn't the other? Well, yeah, movement is energy and energy is power, essentially. So, yeah, you do need energy to move something. It makes perfect sense. So, so yes, um, custom orientation is planned. We may end up adding in a power requirement based on the size of the turret. Yep. To to rotate that turret. So rotation of the dock. Yeah. Um. To rotate the turret, there's a dock ship and there's a turret ship. So I, I don't know. Okay, I'll just explain. All right. You dock all of your uh, turrets and they all face in a particular direction. Say I want the one on the bottom to face forwards. It's that turret dock orientation. Will we be able to choose how each turret is docked or oriented? Yes. Awesome. He's been working on that system already. It won't be in this current pre-build, but um, he is working on it. Aw, oh, sad face. That was one of the features I was actually looking forward to as part of my ship designs. Right, then you it had it had to get delayed yeah, I'm here. Cool. so that it could be implemented properly. Oh yeah, I know. All that will get it is enough for me. Cool. So what's the next question, bud? Next question. Uh, will Turtz ever be able to draw shields from his parent ship, or do you think that's a bad idea? If so, why? Now, this is me personally. I don't think we should ever have full shields on a turret. Um, possibly a percentage of shields, but that's also getting into um, the potentials we have for redoing shield systems, because I have ideas there as well. To add um, more customization and control for the player, instead of just a blanket ship-wide shield. Now, I remember talking to you, Cal, about this one. Do you want to go into this now? Um, well, I, I'll go ahead. Or I'll just go ahead quick. And, sorry. 
I, I can, but before I do, um, what Schema said is that we're thinking of making the uh, making the amount of shielding that a turret gets dependent on the size of the turret. So that if you have a super sized turret, it may not be given any shielding because it's so big. Right? Like the, the, the turret block can only supply so much shielding at once, right? That sort of thing. That makes sense too. Now, um, get, I, we'll just, um, the shielding issue, I, I think we should just save for the miscellaneous just so they're not wearing, I'm good it's not that. really related to turrets, so. Well, if someone point. wants to throw right. that on the bottom of the list, we'll get to it. All right, not a problem, not a problem. All right, let's uh, go ahead and... Uh, are there any plans to change docking? One big issue with the current system is the use of docking beams interacting with Plex doors. Ah, this one's a pretty easy one to fix. Um, the scheme was talking about just adding in a right-click option as opposed to your left-click option. The right-click option would just use your docking beam and it would ignore the plex doors so it, it would shoot through them so you'd still have both functionalities another elegant solution that was beautiful so remote so, access the and best. then a straight up docking function yeah. sounds wonderful um one question other, uh, i have comments? for you that isn't on the list and i forgot to add it when we were taking these is will ships with Belly mounted turrets have their docking profile ever adjusted to compensate for the turret. The docking do you profile. mean do, do, do you mean have the turret on the belly face forward instead of backward? No, I mean when that ship docks to something else and it has a turret on its bottom, do we have to manually build the ship so that it goes beyond the height of the turret, or will the docking system eventually compensate for that naturally? Because ah, right I, I now, when you do saying. dock that way, the turret ends up inside the station or whatever you've docked to. Yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I, I'm going to have to wait for an answer from Schema on that, so I don't actually know. Um, I I could say everything's possible, but I don't know if he's tried working on that, if there's particular difficulties involved. So. Uh, if you give me a minute, I'm sure he'll have an answer for you. Cool. Yeah, that's something I've been interested in as a builder because I'm one of those avid turret builders. Think... Oh no, it makes it makes complete sense, especially with orientable docking coming. Uh, um, right. You know, you might have a side mounted turret and you want to dock to the side, it's going to have the same problem. Mm -hmm. I think um, we got a filler question if we're waiting uh, to give him a minute. But did you okay so yeah is the tractor um, beam still planned he sorry he's saying oh, he's it is possible this. he's saying it is possible but it would force a larger docking area well, that you I would have work with you would have to take into account your docking areas for the main ship's docking area right yeah. so you have a 10 block wide dock on the side of your ship Technically, your ship is now 10 blocks wider for the dock it requires. Yeah, uh, that I'm more than willing to work with if it means I don't have to undock my ship or force them, the design changes to compensate for it. Yeah, um, like I mentioned with the rotation, it's something that you just made him and I aware of, which is with orientation, this is going to become more of an issue because it won't just be bottom docks, it'll be any side that you're docking to with you know so it, it's something he's going to have to rework the docking system to deal with that probably not something a lot of people want to hear especially after the last major docking rework but if well, it okay. gets things fixed yeah. i'm all for it fine progress that's what it is quite positive yep. about progress myself if it breaks docking and that upsets you play a different part of the game, yeah, test that's, that's, out something yeah, else. That's what I tell people as well, yeah. There's a lot more to the game. Um, I'll fit into breaking docking, I'll find a way to make it work again. And if you break it, submit your <laughs> bug reports, and then you will help exactly. it to get yeah. fixed. You know, there's a lot of people that did have a problem with docking, but none of them, not a single one of them, um, submitted a bug report. This is the mushroom fleet, damn it. We make things happen. Oh, that was that was going back to the beginning of last year. There weren't many people on the server then. Um, but yeah. yeah, so 
Rival? Have we covered that question? Is anyone? Yeah. Anyone I think anything about the that? one is uh, is a tractor beam still and yeah, and um, like it's cutting duck, out. Ducking you know, beam. It's cutting out on you, bud. It's so unlucky. That question just doesn't want to be asked. It seems. Um, right. I'll 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 ask. Is the tractor beam still planned? Will it be like a sticky docking beam? Uh, yes, in a way. Right. Cool. <laughs> it was we, such we a want, s silly question. It's such an easy question. So. We want to have a tractor beam, but it's going to have to work around certain game mechanics. So. Cool. cool. The functionality we want, yeah. Yeah, just the ability. It doesn't. It doesn't matter what if it's a beam. If it doesn't matter, just the ability to move another entity without it docking to you. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I know. That's all really be interesting for uh, a lot of things. But anyway. I got another one slightly off topic since we're on the concept of docking and moving ships. What are the prospects of Plex landers coming back so this way those that want to go down to a planet but not establish a docking area can land on a planet without much fuss? Without much lag, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I... Is there any concept of a system like that coming back or no? I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. This is just me, not schema talking. Um, but I'm hypothesizing that there's a possibility, say on like a home base or on a base in general, have a high cost, no, um, no docking zone dock. That would work just like a Plex lander, right? Yeah. But I, I don't know, there's limitations and there's issues with that. There's a reason there is a docking zone that's to prevent collisions and things like that to cause lag. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that and I'm and in love with the system because I use it so much. It was an idle thought so that people can get a ship onto a planet and not have to worry about will it fit inside of a prefab docking area or if they even have to set up a docking area at all. Well, again, the dock, the, the dock zone toggle is the same thing, but um, whether or not there would be a specific block that never uses that, say only allowed on bases or only allowed on planets, um, it's a possibility, yes. It's one I'm, we'll have to talk about and uh, be careful when we add it in to prevent things like trolling and griefing. Because if you have someone try and dock a Titan to one of those and it's turned so that the Titan is in the planet and then they undock, all of a sudden it lagstorms your entire server. Yeah. Lagstorm, interesting. Well, the other way That's, it should yeah. be done is, is landing gear on the physical <laughs> ship itself and it balances the ship. Is that something a lot of people do with Plex stores is they build landing gear that can be toggled on and off on they ships. Do, yeah, a lot of people do that, but I find once the ship goes over a certain size it just becomes silly because you get teleported away. So, I'm, I, for me, big ship, shuttle! <laughs> but, yep. you know, some people want to do it for a screenshot, usually. They've built a big ship, they want to get a picture, you know, I can see that. Yep. All right. Uh, how am I coming? Through? You're coming through, okay, mate? All right. Well, I think that means that we need to hit up the uh, next section. Unless there's any other comments from anyone. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know this is Omni's big uh, baby at the moment, but uh, we're on to creatures, guys. So, what kind of space creatures are being developed? Will there be space-born creatures like? in TNG. Space ducks. Exactly. Uh, like like you mentioned, man. This, this is something that uh, Omni is heavily involved in because he's the one making the uh, the models for things like this. Uh, him and Schema have been working together on the uh, making a system. Um, they're working on a versatile system. It can auto-generate thousands of creatures based on parts. Um, that means procedural for anyone who's wondering. And um, they also plan on a reproduction system for creatures um, 
that means a player could breed certain creatures together, melding their uh, their stats for an assumed average. Um, right now, there's already a space creature that you can find in the game, and uh, do you want me to show them? <laughs> show, yeah, you, show you them can show point. them, and uh, yeah, you can. You, if if you like, you can go ahead and just tell everyone what the name the community decided to come up for it, because things like that, as developers, it's just oh, like. Yeah. That's which one? Awesome. Which one? There was there were loads of them. Was it Mauler or something Freaky else? Freaky little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure the most common one that I've seen at least was calling them quads. So I'm just like quads. Oh right, that's, okay. Because they do have four legs. It's simple and elegant. I think okay. that was mostly based on the resource files for the textures and such of them because they were called quad leg, quad body stuff like that. Yeah, I think they're just bastards. called a rag. But oh, well, I don't. I don't think they have a name. Uh, yeah, yet. they're also called Arg, as in they're gonna maul you, sort of like a What's certain Arg? other infamous name. Was it down oh. that came out with bubble ducks? Yeah, bubble ducks. Yes. Bubble ducks. The bubble ducks. Yeah. Yep, that's the mushroom fleet nickname for them. Bubble ducks. I mean, I love how your screen is just filled with the old icons from my ship. <laughs> Sorry about the spam. Icons. Where's that? All the arrows on your screen. Of it, oh god, yeah, the, like uh, I tab G's off. Yeah, that's that's Apex. I'm just getting us some bubble ducks. Bubble ducks. Quads. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them. Oh, creepy little bastards. Okay. Yeah, these guys. It's not very well that's lit here, really... but then it's my fault for uh, using shadows. I love shadows. I think they're great. I do too. Makes the screenshots look awesome. So let's see, I've got one, two, three, let's put one in a bright place. Let's put one here. No, not my seat. <laughs> Sorry, Zero. We can uh, we can do the next question while he's getting that, uh, sure. that display set up. Sounds good. Um, what kind of creatures are we likely to see in the future? Uh, will we be getting a, a space leviathan or friendly space whales? <laughs> one guy couldn't just really want ponies. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's Carmen. Told him no. Um, hey, can I make a suggestion? Like Calvary, Is Cal Calvary talk, and then afterwards, maybe. Okay. Well, I, the the simple answer is maybe. Um, the if if you're wanting particular custom entities like a space whale, that may not fit in with the procedural uh, generation system, but. Um, Given the flexibility of that system, I it could easily, um, I imagine we could easily add in a specific creature, or the server could add in a specific creature as they want. So you could have a leviathan or a space whale. I assume if we I don't assume. do it, the modders will. So that's a fair point. It's not very have well fandom, will build. Yeah. That's the modder mantra. They're a bit dark, guys, I'm sorry, but, um... Yeah, and, um, the scaling for creatures is definitely something we can incorporate. So even the, uh, the, the procedural... Of course, the lighting, yeah, sorry. Well, one of their aspects, instead of being a part, could be a size. So you might have little tiny ones, and you could have, you know, some very large, scary ones. I'd also imagine intellect could work as an attribute for creatures. This is just me throwing ideas out there, but say if they have an intellect aspect, all of a sudden, instead of acting like a dumb creature, they're going to act like an AI. NPC races, right? Uh, it, it's it's oh, possible, right? Um, if there's going to be like creature breeding, will it be possible for, say, a queen-like creature to spawn uh, sub-creatures? I, it's possible. I, I don't know how specifically Omni and uh, Schema want to do things like that. Um, how they breed might be one of their attributes. You know, how many offspring they have at a time, how often they have offspring. Like, for example, they might just place egg blocks that turn into creatures eventually. For example, I mean... I, he said a, a queen is definitely possible. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. An, an egg block that will spawn creatures. That's a very intriguing idea. 
I'm on a roll today. <laughs> Basically, and now we're talking sudden, no. about a mob spotter. We'll just throw that yeah, out yeah. there. It might look like a cool little egg, but it would be a mob spotter. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. It, with, with the idea I mentioned, it would basically be a single-use mob spawner. Well, yeah. But, yeah, a mob spawner block. But I, that's like jelly... the spawn eggs in uh, Minecraft. That's actually how um, jellyfish procreate in many cases. Fun fact. God, they like create that, so cages with spinning stuff. entities inside of it that spawn it's... things? close actually it does look like a cage but it's actually a coral like structure and larval jellyfish break off from it huh it is essentially a, a jellyfish spawning structure you learn something every day <laughs> i know things <laughs> is this education yeah. time with apex now yeah right. totally useless right. things but things nonetheless as soon as it does it turn into story time we'll be exactly. good so, um, so the Apex. what was the question? Oh, I found out about jellyfish. <laughs> no, 42? I promised Reuben I would take this seriously. Yeah. Six times seven. Yeah. Six, six times what? seven is forty-two. Yeah. So what was the question? Six times seven. <laughs> I'm not if, trying to uh, derail. I'm actually trying to get back on topic. I'm yeah, not, hold on just one second well. here. <laughs> I just saw my um, shit come on screen. <laughs> If everybody can hold on one second, I'd like to welcome Saber to the chat. Finally, Hi, Saber. thank you. Welcome, Saber. What's up, guys? It's all good. Not much, not much. Hold on one second for me, Saber here. Welcome to the Inquisition. <laughs> everybody no one suspects the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> because they always gave a month notice. All right, so I think we're going to move on to crafting now. I think we unless there's anything else under creatures other than coral structures spawning jellyfish. <laughs> I think we're good. Well, All right. Space jellyfish would be cool. Just saying. All right, fair enough. There will be thousands um, of creatures, I think. Oh yeah. Sense. Yep. So crafting. Um, do are there any plans to simplify the current rather elaborate crafting system? Yes. Yay. The. The current system is the remainder of the old system and partial implementations of two new systems. Um, I'd really like to see all three get combined and streamlined into one cohesive logical system. Yeah. Random it's something we're working on. I don't actually have a direct solution at the moment, although since I made up cubitons, cubitons or rather cool. I didn't. I didn't make them up. I provided the solution yeah. for the idea. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm partial to seeing them used as a base resource, but I really, at this point, we're open to ideas because, um, yeah, it's just not something we've been focusing on, and it's the the way it is right now. It's most players are well aware it's exploitable and resources are just far too easy to come across because you can create infinite loops to get all the resources you need. Yeah. Or all the credits you need. Exactly. All right, I think that actually goes uh, into the next question here pretty well. Um, will we see more logical or lateral recipes in factory systems, e.g. yellow hull from sand, red hull from red rock, etc.? Yes. That actually would be a direct effect um, if I managed to tie in the cubitons with it. Amazing. Well, cubitons are great, but this would be for uh, mass production, wouldn't it? Uh, no, I, I would... It, it, it's complicated since it isn't even fully worked out, right? Uh, how do you explain that you only halfway understand or have solved? What, you but mean yeah, we... with reference to cubitons or recipes? Well, think of cubitons like um, ores. Right, like you get a different types from different um, it's quantum from mechanics, different isn't it? areas, and then you can use those in crafting items. Then you can craft items into blocks, that sort of thing. The, right, the, it, uh, the, the it, thing, it's something we're going to work on. Yes, I think, I think the whole point of having a simpler crafting system would be not to make it arbitrary logic that they have to spend ten hours learning first. I like the idea yeah, of cubitons, and it is it is in a really powerful system, but like. People just you just buy everything from the shop, yeah. There's no exploration. There's no going to mine something. You don't think, oh, I need this, so I have to go here. You just think, I need a shop, 
and that's the end. Of we it. can that's we end, we you know we can do that with the cubiton system though. We okay. just have to organize it better. Because I'm saying um, say give what, people a say, reason we'll, to resource Say one particular gather. branch. Yeah, we we do want that. Yeah. I guess I'm trying to explain something that just isn't ready to be explained. Right. We we want to simplify it and make it make sense for people while still retaining the fun, high customization option as an option. Fair point. It's a good aim to be, and that seems to be the way that this whole game is. So, I think uh... Schema made a good point, which is with the space setting, it's hard to get something um, logical that's a. a, a when you can just fly to a different planet to get another resource, it's really hard to make certain resources um, yeah. more valuable than others. And that's why you need, you know, that's why you need to have a recipe system that isn't just throw it all in a box and eventually you'll have enough bits to make the bit you needed, you know? Yeah. Um, I think cubitons are great because if I'm, in a, if I'm in a mix, yeah, if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I've got no ship core, but I've got a whole bunch of hull and a whole bunch of thrusters on me, then I can theoretically throw that into cubitons and make myself a ship core. Don't quote me. That's not and right. And that, but that's what we want it there for. That's it, perfect. It's something. It's a utility. Yeah. To be honest, it's personal crafting explained. It makes sense. We can like manipulate atoms or something. You know, that's cool. Um, but the problem is, at the moment, nobody understands where they are, where they find an SD1000 capacitor or how. You know, so you just buy everything from the shop. And it's good that it's in the shop, but what it means is that on a big server, all ev all everyone anyone wants to know is where are the shops. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I guess what it comes yep. down to is we want to improve it, but it's hard to give any uh, specific details on it because we haven't worked out the system. Mm. It's possible. I think that would be a question, though, isn't it? I think isn't it, it already? Is that, isn't it possible? I just had an it, absolutely it, horrific idea. Um. Well, just just to get that answered, Cal, is it already possible to make a custom re recipe? I I know that servers have their custom economies and yeah. they have what what they call fixed recipes. So I assume yes, it's possible so it's to possible change already. it. Yeah, I cool. think it's a lot of work to go so through and do it. That's what I mean, though. If it's already possible and you let other people do it on their own server if they want, you don't really need to, do you? You know. So there is that. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Apex, what were you saying? That's no wrong. I just had an idea for an absolutely awful way to assault an enemy base. Oh, right, okay. What's well, that's we kind of... We can get to that later, What's though. The, we're on crafting at the moment, but... Oh, okay, so sorry, this was, to do, this, right this was to do with creatures, Only so just I should have Ryben done it earlier. Ryben. What's that, Ryben? Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, how... I, I think that we'll, what we'll do, Cal, if you ever decide to come... We can go that question again if we ever do Q and A number two. Yeah, there'll be lots more questions, I'm sure. Well, I would love to host as many of them as we as I can, and of course, I will have better internet tomorrow. I'm I'm calling the company tomorrow. But how long in the future do you see yourself starting a proper refinement and balancing of the economic system? This. Um... This gets back to uh, the, the crafting. It's hard to implement a system when everything keeps changing. Until all the features are in, all the block types are in. Um, it's really I mean, not worth it. Yeah, um, I, I see us really messing with it once we have most of the block systems, or the block types and ship systems changed and overhauled, the new stuff added in. And when we actually redo the generation for the universe, um, at that point, we'll have... Uh, that would be a good time to implement a new crafting system because you know what all your resources are. You know how rare they are. You can tie those into the blocks that you know exist in the game now. So I, I, there's Fair no ETA, ETA on it, but... It will likely coincide or be close to when the uh, universe regeneration or when the universe generation gets an overhaul. All right. Well, that's pretty uh, straightforward. So, in other words, a longer version of soon. 
Trademarked. Next time. Trademarked. Next time on <laughs> Star Made. On Q&A with the devs. That's what I will be talking about right. then by the looks of it. So I think just to generate some rage in the chat, uh, we're going to skip over FTL and move that to the next one. <laughs> They're gonna be Everyone like, Everyone brace your sphincters. <laughs> Why, Raven? Prepare for lag storm, level five. Everyone leaves. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure yeah, if they've um, waited this long, they'll wait long enough, so. I'm sure okay. they won't mind another five minutes, because the next section isn't even that big, is it? Uh, it's just this and miscellaneous, and then we're pretty much done. But I, all right, I'll I'll let you guys go. We will go into FTL next. <laughs> but Cal, I believe, I believe you want it. Oh, let me see here. Um, hello. Sorry, just just taking care of a little bit of business. Uh, let's go ahead and cover FTL real quick. <laughs> real quick. This is going to be a long one, guys. Three hours <laughs> we'll, we'll, later. We'll just jump right through it. Yep, yep. So, oh. how about this? One word answer, Cal. FTL. Um. There's um. several types. No, that's it. <laughs> that was it. That's no, get. just um. Oh, that's uh, it. Right. That's it. It was a one word answer. That's all I got. All you got. That's it. We're done. The answer guys for FTL is um moving on to miscellaneous <laughs> oh, oh, go ahead Kyle. sorry to cut you off all right um no that, that's it um yeah uh, <laughs> all right we're done yep that's it you, you heard it from the dad that's, that's it there's there's been lots of suggestions for FTL types what it comes down to is three or four basic concepts there's jumping which is teleporting to a new place there's um hyperluminal which is traveling really really fast and then there's spatial distortions which is you know going through a wormhole or you know it, it, it's the oh there's a fourth one i'm sorry there's also an option for a type of hyperspace what we plan to use in the game um We'd like to have a lot of different options, but mostly, uh, I guess, schema says mostly jump gates and black holes are planned. Cool. Um, you know, I, I don't know if we can have hyperspace or if we can have wormholes, but. Uh, are you allowed to reveal the method? Because, of course, everyone's going to be talking about it, and I thought that was quite interesting when we spoke about it. I don't know. Well, I thought I knew the method. Oh, you mean like how the mechanics would yeah. work? Yeah, so it's not a That's... change sector, because the thing is, as soon as you start talking about what it will be, people want to say X, Y, Z, and the, what you said to me was quite elegant. Um, it was about the sector boundaries. Oh, <laughs> so I can't I say a, anything, really, can I? I? I got sent a message with a string of gibberish. Oh, really? And uh, the follow-up <laughs> message is it was, shut up to me now. <laughs> no, it, no it, it, it was, I don't even know what the symbols are, but the follow-up message is, whoops, spilled my drink. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, um, yeah, I, I can go over it, and uh, I'll just talk about all four, um, all four mechanics. These aren't specific FTLs, like, you're not going to have Mass Effect jump gates. It, we're not going to put them in like that. We're going to do it like we would with the weapon systems. We're going to give you a functionality. You can build it how you want it, make it look how you want, and call it what you want. So it can um, be a warp drive if you want it to, but yeah, you could probably use it for many things, and I like that. The, the base factor is it's going to cost a lot of power. Oh, like yeah. you're gonna have, oh, yeah. You're going to have to sit there and charge up to do these you're not just going to be able to you know say oh i'm losing a fight push a button and you're gone there's none of that it's it's one of those things like you're gonna have to spend you know five minutes pumping power you're gonna have to into a jump gate yeah, yeah to charge it up and then jump sounds um, good so we'll, we'll we'll start with the the most popular one which is jump gates which is basically um you go up to a station or something right and it flings you you know, somewhere else in the universe. Like, you get teleported there, yeah, right? Yeah. Instantaneous travel. Mm. Um, that's basically would work similar to uh, 
the jump gate would work similar to the change sector command that we have in the game right now. People have pointed this out. Yes, it's obvious. We're aware that it, the same system would work. We're just not at the point of implementing FTL. Um, so that one's covered. People have suggested it. We've been aware of it. It's possible. We'll get to it, hopefully. Um, I don't know if we'll use it or not. There may be some issue I'm not aware of that would make it detrimental and we would want to avoid it. The second type is hyperspace. Um, hyperspace is probably the least likely one just because we don't want to add a bunch of space where you're being taken out of the beautiful star made universe. Right? We want to keep you in the world that we've been working on building. That being said, there's a possibility to have a, a hyperspace where you could just go really fast and travel in yeah. uh, a cool looking area that has absolutely no physical blocks. Yeah, make it pretty. A pr a pretty it's possible, whoosh. but but it's uh, we could add a whoosh to any of these. That's just a graphical effect. Oh, the I hyperspace know. would be um, traveling from point A to point B but you're traveling through Dimension X, and it's going to take a little time, but not nearly as much as it would have in the star Main universe. So it's not instantaneous, but there is some travel. The next type is... Um... Sorry, i got to think here. Wormholes. Oh, damn. I'm sorry. The last thing that you just said. You've heard of Outer Phase, haven't you? So then you fly through stuff until you get to the other gate. So you're still in the same universe, but you're actually not phys a physical entity, so you can be seen as a kind of ghost that's image. That, but... that, that's the next type I'll get Oh, to that. sorry, mate. Carry on. No, no, it, it's, it's all good. That fits in with the fourth game, with the fourth um, FTL mechanic. We'll get to that. Don't worry. Um, the third one is wormholes, warp gates, you know, uh, from the the wormhole at Deep Space Nine in Star Trek to the the Stargates that you have in uh, SG One, they're all the same thing. You walk through an event horizon, you're teleported somewhere else. Um, when you go through that, there's the possibility of having size issues, so, right? So there's a wormhole network. Players build a gate, right? There's this giant gate. You find it. And you're like, ooh, I'm gonna fly my battleship through here and attack the person on the other side. You fly through. You come out on the other side. The gate's one third the diameter of the original. You just had two thirds of your ship shaved away. Poof, gone. You need to explore these things before you just run through them. So they'll have randomly sized gates, and the gates would be built by players. Oh right, so that's so just a poorly built gate then. Or a trap. Oh. Or, or a trap. Or yeah, small. very true. An iris. <laughs> There's some. I, some I would that imagine. I... I would imagine any generated gates used by NPCs or AIs would tend to be the same size, but that isn't necessarily the case. It, they could be told to do it otherwise. Um, then uh, the the last type is the uh, super luminals, which is just traveling really, really fast. Which people players do that in the game right now by turning up their travel speed and they don't run into anything because they're flying so fast nothing can load. The downside is when you stop, if something's where you are, all of a sudden it's inside your ship. And, you know, with things like collision damage or whatever, you know, we could even just make it when you pop out of space, don't have collision damage so there's no lag. But if there's something inside your ship, just, you know, maybe delete your ship that sort of very risky thing so that you only want to use, you know, that in special conditions or just adding risks to other things. There's lots of options here, but those are the four different mechanics we can employ. Uh -huh. And um, as for how we're going to balance them, there's not a lot of specifics yet. FTL is there's something a... we won't be adding until late in the uh, development. There's a, there's a, there is actually a fifth. I did some research for you after we spoke. Okay. There's a fifth type. The improbability, the improbability drive. It teleports <laughs> you and your enemies to a random location in the universe, and it turns them into a bowl of petunias and a sperm whale. I think. But the, the rule Either is that random. Or turns... 
Even fun better, as that is. Your <laughs> ship into every ship in the category, or in the uh, catalog, and then back to yours. Yeah. <laughs> as fun as that is, I, I would think that would fall in with the jump gate um, type of uh, FTL. Yeah, it's in the. Uh, people yeah. were asking me in the uh, thing. I did. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it's, it's a famous type of warp technology. Where do you think space whales come from? Come on. Yeah. Come on. And true. <laughs> true. 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 And space whales. Quantum, entang <laughs> Quantum entanglement. The jump drive. Yep. All right. So I think we've covered most of FTL. I'm going to run down the list real quick. Tom, do you have anything else to add? No, I do not. I think we've covered everything. Oh, um, except oh, for the fact that people were wondering about... You didn't say anything about the sector boundaries being... Did we allowed to talk about that, or... Is that not even a thing? You know? Yes, sorry, um, I, I forgot to mention... it's quite an um, elegant way of doing it, and it'll answer a lot of people's questions who do have questions th about it. This would be a function that would work with the, uh, with the, the wormhole and uh, Stargate type of FTL. The event horizon, you. Hopefully, we can just treat it like a sector boundary between two different gates, right? So the gates are both loaded in. It creates a sector boundary between the two. We can show a simple graphic effect, and now flying from one gate to the other is the same as flying from one sector to another. Which is just such a beautiful. If that if that's the way it does happen, that would be such a beautiful thing because. A lot of people worry about when you teleport, colliding with things, and I've travelled a lot of sector boundaries, and I don't collide with many things, so... I think that would be interesting. Um, there is something that uh, I never got the op the um, opportunity to bring up. Um, the credit is limit. It, is it, uh, we'll catch that in the next section, in miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. We'll definitely get that one. Alright. It'll just be a minute. No worries, bro. All right. So, Zero, anything else on FTL? Nah. I'll wait till we actually get to the point where it starts getting implemented before I start messing with it. Fair point. Apex? I'm sorry, what? Anything for FTL? Uh, no. All right. Phantom? I'm good. And Saber? Sound like you might have had something to say. Yeah, well, basically, I just wanted to say that I really like the idea of having to essentially like pioneer the the frontier of the universe if you will in order to get like a jump gate to a certain point rather than just being like oh i want to set my ftl to these coordinates and then going mm, like i mean you could potentially do that but then it'd be really dangerous for you to do it so having like well, player made jump gates or whatever where they like cleared the path mm, that, i think that, that yeah yeah, yeah, I think that will really kind of help um, give people reasons to explore and to actually visit places rather than just, oh, I'm going to set up my home base here or wherever, you know. What we, what, because it's a game, it's a simulation, what we need to do is encourage methods that allow the game to generate your destination, well, either while you're en route or when you arrive there in such a way that it, it makes sense. So, like, say you just teleport somewhere. Well, it's going to generate when you huh. get there, but you may have teleported inside of a planet Dude. or a star, and you're going to regret it. So, Someone yeah. just um, poked me from the fleet chat, saying that uh, maybe jump gates could also cost faction points in addition to power. So it would be like, you it's know... An interesting thought. So then it's they like would a, have a high maintenance cost? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that is a good idea. Um, KY computer. Well, KY I, what about um, larger jump gates requiring more power storage and more power regen? It would I be power usage them. per block, and yeah. to make a larger jump gate, you're going to need more blocks. So it would scale up as you scale up. Nice. All right, I think that's FTL, isn't it? I think so. We covered All everything because right. he covered every category by type. So, yeah. There's yeah. still and lots of details, but I mean that that ought to be enough for people to chew on. But you make yeah. it what you and, want, it, don't you? And yeah, I figure um, it might be. Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I was just gonna say it might be best to, to save that for Q and A number two or three once uh, once some of the details have been hashed out a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Um, well, I think we may as well move on to miscellaneous. This will be the last category. So uh, we're going to start with a build mode question. Will advanced build mode ever get a number entry text field and increase size limits? Yeah, um, they will, but it'll be a server setting because this is something that griefers can use to uh, lag the surfer intentionally. So we'll, we'll leave that control with the, uh, the server admins, but it will be an option. I like that, uh, if you think about it with the new sliders, you can set it in your own and yeah. it's up to you then, isn't it? I, I really like how he leaves control with server owners because then as a community you can decide on what you all want and uh, it actually allows a lot of, a lot of creativity just, to, just from that, you know, diversity and all. Um, oh, also, um, there, we, we, there is going to be probably again with uh, admin controls a, a restriction on uh, the use of uh, mass delete, particularly uh, on the build block. I can most deal likely, with that. most what we were discussing is that in order to use a build block to modify, say, a planet and mass delete things, say if you want to terraform, um, you're going to have to own the planet for a percentage of time. And in order to own the planet for an amount of time, that's a really large home base, right? You're yeah. going to need a good deal of faction members to be able to pull that off, and you're going to have to maintain uh, that territory for a period of time before the build block will enable you to mass remove. It maybe will build yeah. up over time, or we'll just wait until a certain time is allotted, and then just tick over to being possible. Because you know why build block mining is a problem, though, right? Oh, everyone knows why it's a problem. Mm. Yeah, because. All right. But making making this dependent on no, 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 having no. it as as a home base or a forward base, like we mentioned, that possibility, having to have that for a certain amount of time, needing a certain number of faction members, you won't just use this on any planet. You're only going to be using it on your home planet mm. or a planet you highly value. So it won't be a mining technique. It'll be more of a modify my home base technique. I always viewed it as a bit of an ex exploit, to be honest. It is an exploit. It's because you just whack you whack triple symmetry on, go to a planet, and just start removing things randomly and hope that you actually get something useful. But the reason for it is like they don't know. Even if they know, they're trying to make money quick, aren't they? Yeah, but th th this would prevent that sort of mindset from uh, being very productive. Mm -hmm. well, the time and effort put into setting up and maintaining a faction base long enough for uh, you to be able to use this revised method with the build block would make it you're, you're just better off going and going asteroid mining or I going think, and using salvage lasers on a planet i think it would be less of a problem if well once we have site for example quests that give people a reward newbies will come to the shop talk to the npc and then go and do whatever it is and get their reward and so there will be less people going I need ice crystal, you know, or I need to find some ore, because ore is fine, but it just gets sold. It doesn't actually get used for industry. That, that'll change. Yeah, all that will change. We, we, so. We'd really like to see, specifically, to see ore get used, yeah. but also to see other types of blocks be needed. So, but I mean, that's getting back into something we obviously uh, have gone over. So is he is he able to collect? Just out of interest, is he able to get any logs or information from the game? You know how, for example, Minecraft logs, distance traveled, how many iron blocks have smelted every day? All stupid. I know that we might not have that, but you know, for the purposes even just for the dev use to know a lot of people have been mining L5 ores, you know, whereas maybe they weren't always doing that. I mean, you could spot trends of what people are doing. I don't know if um, that's a thing, or is that something that you do? I don't know, you might already do it. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm waiting know. to find out. I'm not aware of it happening. It's quite a random question, I know, but it's just... He, he, the, the, they aren't being done right now. 
but those kind of things with vlogs are completely possible. Nice, because I think it would be really useful, even just for the internal, you, you guys, just so that you know, you know, what, what are the most popular blocks in the game? What isn't getting used, you know, for example? And then maybe why, you know? But yeah, analytics are always useful. That's, that's really cool. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next question, I think. We kind of covered most of this, right? Yep, we've only got a, like, f got a handful of questions left, guys. I just want to thank everyone in the stream for staying on for this long, because everyone stayed on and after the FTL, which is really up. cool. Thank you for jumping in. Sorry, I stream, but all this stuff with to record all of it. So that's good. All right, so. Uh, oh, balls. I will, think we're losing you, Riven. Admin. Riven. Be able to save space stations and planets in a catalog. Yes. Admins can already slash save and no. slash load um, but planets don't do and it. stations. <laughs> uh, <laughs> planets, no. Stations, yes, but yep. the stations end up getting treated as pirate ships. It's inadvisable. Oh dear. Yeah, they, they'll spawn yeah. in waves of three as well, which isn't good, as you know. I've seen them spawn in waves of eight. Oh wow, see, we just don't, we just don't, you know. We'll wait until you've finished that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's good to know, but yes, um, yeah. they they should be added to the catalog, and things like that should be fixed so that you don't have eight pirate bases spawning in. <laughs> it's quite fun. It was quite quite interesting. <laughs> cool. It's comical to say the least. Ryben, are you um, talking? The, uh, mate? the the statistics that you oh, were wow. asking about. Oh yes, he's yes. Saying um, that would be a good for uh, for balancing when the time comes for that. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. I like it. All right. Can you all hear me then? Yes. Now we can hear you, buddy. All right. Uh, let's move on and elaborate on. Uh, I guess there was. We wanted to elaborate on shields a little bit. Yep. Yeah. We threw this one down here because we didn't yep. want to get off topic too much. Shields, OP. <laughs> yeah, shields <laughs> might. Uh, shields might feel more OP. I don't know. We'll, we'll oh really? You gonna buff them? Throw this one out there. Wow. I, I don't know that I'm going to buff them, I'm going to add more control. <laughs> Sorry, you carry on, mate. Uh, weapons will be scary, I hope. <laughs> um, they're, uh, what, this is another hypothetical system, so it's not confirmed to be in the game yet, so don't freak out. Um, the idea is to take your shield blocks, right? And they will work like weapon blocks. They're an enhancer that you link to one primary block. Okay. Sorry. Oh. Having a little, little trouble with uh, saliva going down the wrong tube. Oh. Ooh. Fun. Don't choke on yeah. us. I have a push to talk, so it's okay. Um, I'm good now. Uh, so what will happen is you'll place a shield emitter block and then you will link that block to your groups of shielding. So it won't be ship-wide shielding anymore. That group will apply to that block. It'll yep. have a set amount of health and a set region rate. You will have an option to set your six directionals percentages. So you can set all of the percentage to the forward direction. What that will do is, based on the emitter location within your ship, all say if you put 100% forward, right? Every block on your ship that is forward of that shield emitter block, right? It's positive Z compared to the shield emitter will get the shielding. This isn't linear. It's like the plane of symmetry from that field emitter. So you're going to have emitters forward. with a limited range. So you're going to have to cover your ship with all kinds of little shield arrays to make your shields cover your whole ship. You could, or you could have it all based on one emitter at the center of your ship and just evenly balances shields everywhere. That would be what we have now. Yeah. Or you could set it with one in the middle of your ship and push all your shields forward. <clears throat> or you could set multiple emitters across your ship, customize the shield strengths in different areas. 
Mm. Um, say if you really want to protect that reactor core, you could put in several emitters that only benefit one direction, but since they're looped around that core, that core is now getting four times the shielding so a shield than the rest of the ship. Is that what you're saying? A it, shield it's... core and enhances? But, no, yeah. what, what I'm saying is you know. can set up your emitters to protect what you want. Okay. As opposed to con protecting the whole ship like they do now. Um, what, what Scheme is pointing out is that yeah. your core, by default, will be able to act as a shield emitter. So your current ships, right. as is, will act as if there's one shield emitter and it's just balanced shields everywhere. Oh, so this isn't... This, uh, right, so this isn't you will, you will have a blind spot. This is just to make your shield have hardened front front, front end. What it is, is it lets you have weak directional shielding. Th this is a setup to give you directional shielding. So but you could push your shields forward, right? But it's Weakening percentage, your back end. It? Yes. It's not like you've got all shields at the front and no shields at the back. You can set it up any way you want. You it's would have kind of like what you slider. were talking about with the thrusters earlier. You can set set uh, you can designate set amounts for set directions. Yes, but they'll all still be there. Some areas will just be less than others. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So it's like hardening, basically. You can have hardened shields by making a better array in a particular part of the ship. Yes. That sounds cool. But it, it also will not break current shielding on ships. Will it be visible, or is it just the same graphic? Just it makes the shield graphic when people shoot it. Um. I'm only asking because you called it a, um, an emitter. Oh. Um, the shields will work the same way they do. They'll be okay. skin tight on your ship. Nice. We, we we can't do bubble shielding. No, no, I know people fine. ask for I'm that. Not, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and explain it, though. Cool. Because Please do. people ask for bubble shielding. The problem is, if, especially if you have multiple emitters, that's calculating lots and lots of curved surfaces in a game that doesn't have any hard-coded limitations for the player right, right. building. Yeah, yeah. So they could put in hundreds of little bubble shields and that's just gonna cause lots of lag. So yeah. we're, we're this is the best way to get around that and still have directional shielding. Cool. I'm all for more yeah. meta in design for ship systems. Because the power system uh -huh. is what got me into it, really. Because it was like a little- Can power. I? Can I bring up the thing I was trying to earlier? Sure. I take it we're in miscellaneous now. Yes. Yes. Yep. Lego 8-bit is riding my ass about what? the money limit. What? Oh, the, the, okay. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going to go with that, Apex. So, yeah. The money um, limit my... is an old number that was implemented before Schema changed the amount of data attributed to numbers in the game. It used to be... 2 billion, 147 million was the maximum number you could have. The yeah. limit was added because if you went over that number, you reset to zero. When he changed yeah. how that worked, increasing the limit to like four quintillion, no, it was nine quintillion, which is a huge number. You're never going to reach it. Yeah, so now it's just Challenge a challenge. Yeah, so now it's just a problem with where <clears throat> do the numbers fit on the screen? <laughs> no, Why not just no, nine, 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 that hard limit simply hasn't been changed. Right, cool. So it can be raised. Yes, maybe definitely. Soon. Maybe. Yeah, what, he's, what he's asking is, is it going to be? Who knows? Going to what? Going to be raised. Someone's saying it's... Yeah, there's people saying things. It's possibly that, but... <clears throat> he's saying that it's changed. No, because there have been optimizations made. But anyway, we'll see, won't we? All right. Um, sorry, uh, I wanted to clear up one thing you asked about on the shields. You're asking if there's a different graphic. Mm. I don't know how we would display a weak shield versus a strong shield, or even if we should. No, no, no. It's fine. I was only asking because you said emitter, and by I thought that would mean that you were planning to just trying to preempt questions. Uh, I like the shields as is. That's um, all right. Wait, what? Um, but. The shield totals should amalgamate. So if you have five blocks yeah. and they all have an overlapping shield area at a particular part of the ship, that particular part of the ship will have 
that high of a shield amount. It won't be one just the strongest one or the weakest one. It'll just add them all up, so it'll be really strong in that area. Hmm. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah, well, the way I, I, I build a layer of shields all the way around everything on my ship, so it's like one of the last layers to go down. So that's interesting to see what will happen <laughs> when I do it with this system. But who, you know, we'll see, won't we? That's 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 all. The, that's the best thing about all of this. Yeah, it'll be interesting for my ships because one of the things I use for space filler is shield blocks. Mm. Well, like I mentioned though, um, as a default, you could just keep doing what you're doing, and it won't negatively impact your ship. It'll just put all your shields through your core as if it were the, the emitter and it will evenly balance it throughout your ship. So your shields will can still function just as they are now, but, but if you want to specially design things or have custom control, you can use the emitters and adjust the percentages. Um, George the Greatest kind of uh, wrote what I was thinking, the whole shield strength color thing. The weaker, the more transparent, the stronger, the more opaque. That gets down to texture packs. I mean, it, 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 it? it's like how how, how what mm -hmm. counts as the strongest? Five million shields, ten million. What counts as the weakest? Obviously, you know, one shield point's going to count as the weakest. Can you even see that? Is it proportional? It's, it, I think he means proportional. Proportional like, to what? Go can I can I just maybe ask? Wise? Is is it even a texture or is it an in-game asset, like an engine drawn graphic, the shield graphic? Because if it's a texture, you can just tell people to make their own textures if they want it to look different, you know? Right now, it's a texture. There they can go. just go in and change out the shield texture. So but what? that doesn't change the, uh, the how transparent it is. It doesn't change the color gradient that it goes through as it okay. takes damage. Right, okay, cool. But I like the color gradient. They didn't always have that, I don't think. And it actually it works. It works really well. When you're shooting the corner of a ship, it starts going red, and then you break through it. Right. Um, the uh, the credit issue. Yep. Oh, apparently the shield graphic is extra made by the engine, so it's not something they can just change out. I uh, maybe it will. Found be. that in the image resources. I, I thought I had two, but I never managed to get it to, to change it and get it to work. So I, maybe I think it was it's something at one point that, we... that file just was never removed. Yeah. It's something that has the potential to be made customizable. So, I mean that that'll that'll come in time. I hope the the credits um, instead of increasing the cap, it, it might be better to balance it so that things just cost less, and then it won't be really be a problem. Because I mean, who needs two billion credits, right? Um, so, as a feature that's already uh, in work in the next uh, build is. Sorry. Um, in the next build is a, a price buy and a price sell separated by the block or separated for every block. So you could actually have custom economies cool. um, based on the blocks. That's nice. Huh. What's the next question? We can't have many left. What yeah, we've got now two we've got uh, the next one. Uh, oh god. What's He's that breaking mate? up again. Three. Three. Three? Looks like three questions left, roughly. Okay. Um, thoughts on motors, pistons, and rails? Yep. Um, I, I still haven't talked with Schema about this from what we mentioned before, but the, the, the turrets already have a potential use for the the motor for a pivot and a rotary type um, pistons and rails I know he's talked about wanting to do rails so that's something I'm gonna say is planned and then pistons is something you could convert a rail system to work or we could just make it work on its own um, yeah, right I remember we talked about that a lot <laughs> that, I, his his simple answer is we're planning stuff like a movable dock area 
cool. So rail. Yeah, okay. like a, a I mean, dock. it, it, it should all be possible. Sounds excellent. I, that's probably the best answer we could hope for, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Combine that with activation blocks, and uh, we can get some crazy stuff happening. So. All right. Um, I know Phantom went after these next two. He put these in. I'm gonna go ahead and let him ask the questions. You broke up heavily there. I don't know what you said. He said um, Phantom, he wants you turn. to ask those questions, Phantom, that you've added in before the okay. uh, end of the list. Well, the first one is going back to the first list briefly because I either missed it or it didn't come up. But you're going saying about different thruster types, so I was asking different torques so that some could be used for pushing stuff, whereas some would just be flat out speed. Ah, oh, you mean having ones that inherently give you a reduced maximum speed, but in return they give you a higher Newton? Yeah. yeah. Ah, now I get it, yeah. That, of course, is possible. I mean, so it, it, we would have a that's thruster just block and then something changes. equivalent to RCS block. Kind of, yeah. We, 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 I already covered the, the RCS concept. Uh, that's ship agility. It's not actually tied in with um, how much torque uh, a block puts out. So when you're talking about uh, mining ships and the things having more mass so you need more thrusters, you could just have the shunting ones to be able to still move instead of just a shit ton of speed ones. Yeah, yeah that, that actually yeah. makes sense, yeah. It's interesting. You know, give you, uh, th that's just different thrust types, you know, like you yeah. could have an ion thruster, so, right? Yeah, it's going right. to give you uh, a decent amount of speed or have a low power cost, but there's trade-offs for using those. Like the one right now that we have is, you know, just high thrust speed, but low Newtons, you know, it, it that, again, there's lots of possibilities there. It's simply adding different statistics to a couple of different block types. There's no performance reason why we couldn't uh, implement things like that. So, and the other one is when NPCs like spawn at some shops. If you do shop restock, would it respawn the NPCs? Um, I imagine we could make a command that would just tell it to respawn the default NPC. I don't know if you want to tie it into the shop restock command, but um. I mean, there's already commands to bring in NPCs, so that's just something that should get expanded as uh, NPCs are uh, further implemented in the game. Um, if so, I yes. may kind of piggyback on the uh, AI, um, I wasn't here for the beginning or for the earlier segment for AI, which I believe you guys went over, um, but I do have a quick question about like an NPC crew, which obviously we know that there will be NPC crews. Um, are you guys going to implement anything where you can uh, let's say select a block and then give a command to like have the NPC activate that block which would uh, kind of lead into my next question like initially it could just be like oh well now they'll be in gravity or whatever like I know you can kind of attach them to your ship but I mean like actually walking around in gravity um, you mean walk up to a gravity block tell the NPC to use it or walk up to a yeah. turret block and tell the NPC to use the turret Yes, actually, that was my second point. Or another weapon system. I think that would mm -hmm. easily tie into uh, the controls for telling, or for assigning roles on a ship for that you okay. want an NPC to use. Telling them to use a certain block would, uh, that, that's something we're going to be adding in, yeah. Okay, cool, because yeah, that, that was what I was thinking was, um, and, and it would then basically when you negate tell them, for the Bobby block. Yeah, th then when you tell them to use a specific block, their AI functionality will be applied to that block as if you had a Bobby yeah. attached to it. So okay. now that that NPC you have set to guard duty, who's just going to shoot anything hostile, you tell him to use a gravity block. Well, now he's going to walk on the floor. Then you walk over to a turret, and you assign him to the not the turret itself, but you assign him to the turret dock. He will now control that docked turret, whatever is docked there, and he will shoot at any ship that he sees in range. Perfect. Or you could have him set to be guard duty, where he only shoots in response to aggressive actions, things like that. Um, the the we mentioned before that the AI will be able will be similar between the two. This is why it comes in handy for that because you'll be able to move around um, the the actual AI functionality between ship and NPC functions. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm presuming you'd also be able to like say have some fighters where like you could just tell them that you know that's their fighter so then you could uh, say go battle stations or whatever like uh, however you would end up doing that and then they would actually like take off in the fire fighter sorry um there's some limitations with using NPCs with fighters, mostly because NPCs aren't as good at piloting as humans are. Yeah. At least not the NPCs we're using. Obviously, AI can do pretty well, but that's getting into some advanced stuff that's really hard to implement in a game. We're not going to have automated drones like what the military might have in real life. Um, we have to stick with simplified stuff. There's a few solutions there. I'm. We should be able to make something like that work. That's the goal, is to make something like that work, to where you could have 10 NPCs walking around your hangar bay, you press a button that sounds battle stations, they all hop in their ships. Now you target a ship and you say, you know, go through a command menu, tell your fighters to launch and attack that ship. They go attack it, when they're done, you can push a recall button and they will come back and dock. Sounds good. It's a goal that we have. There's some, but there are some uh, some obstacles that we have to get around so that that it can be implemented without negatively impacting the game. Yeah, I think definitely. the biggest obstacle you have with that is pathfinding. Yep. Pathfinding with completely custom ships. Mm -hmm. Well, I wonder if there's a way. It's, um... Schema says it, it's really not easy. I mean, I that's that's what it comes down to. I can dream up all sorts of stuff, but you know, Whether it can he's be the one who has to. Yeah. yeah. You always almost feel bad because sometimes you'll come up with an amazing idea and everyone will love it, but but it'll just be like complete rewrite. So no. And you and really, it's just about whether you can accept that your latest and greatest idea might not be possible and dealing with it, you know. Uh, but to be honest, I think it's done such a great job with leaving everything open. So it's it's your choice, you know. Mm hmm. Well, I'm wondering if there's a way where, um, just to see if this could be made easier for Schema, and obviously this is just an idea, I don't know as much about the coding of it, but I wonder if you could assign your crew to your ship, like, uh, let's say you select your core and then assign two ship, kind of like you do a faction and then home base, um, and so that maybe it would be preloaded somehow, where like they would have the, uh, the pathfinding kind of preloaded for them. Uh, obviously that would change if you change the ship, but it wouldn't be nearly as much as having them constantly have to alter you know, every single time, so they would always have like a set path, kind of like I said, preloaded for them. Something like setting path markers as you're building a ship. Well, not even really that. Just like in that, it would almost like give the AI a blueprint or a map of your ship, um, because no, um, like you the, would the, have the a problem. I, I'm just going with what he's telling me. It, doing that sort of thing is really not simple. Yeah, and it's well, gonna have a, uh, it's gonna have a, a very negative performance impact. That's also a good thing, though. If you keep it light, it reduces lag, and some of the more complex stuff. I mean, I've always, personally, I just have it in for databases. No. Sorry. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. Um, he he is he is saying that what uh, Saber was saying with the markers would be a good optimization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it's not impossible to do this but there's some heavy considerations we're going to have to look into yeah and that's you know way down the line like that's obviously not a priority at all so there's plenty of other stuff that uh, is in the works that I'm totally happy with okay uh, can y'all hear me yep yes we can hear you again all right uh, phantoms you got to ask your second question right yes all right so I think it's time for that very last question. So, when is point one going to come out? I can't wait, says somebody from Reddit, and I agree with them fully. Well, the pre-build is out, so you can play it now. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll be out as an actual patch that will be downloaded in your updater as soon as it's done. We're not just oh, we're we're not just teasing people. It's not like we know it's going to be ready on this day, but we're just not telling you. Um, I'm it, just waiting for the chat reaction now. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> our testers currently aren't finding any more serious bugs. I know with this last patch he did yesterday evening, um, there was a display bug with some chunks. That's not actually a, uh, a data loss. It's just a, a, a chunk error that a reload right. can fix. Um, so th th there's some minor stuff that he's still working on, but um, I mean, it's it's at the point where it's like it's wrapping up. I mean, he's not adding more features in it right now. We've got most of the serious bugs. We're just trying to catch a few more things. <laughs> the ones the that keep slipping. <laughs> well, I mean, like the, the this last patch made a huge um, frame rate boost, right? But it also introduced this chunk load bug and nobody wants to deal with that so yeah. it, it has to wait until that's fixed this is yeah. just how development works you don't foresee these problems you deal with them as they come and you don't oh yeah the intentionally FPS, release a product early the, just the, because players ask for it the improvement with lag has been was was better with 109 but like i say people are tending to because this is the thing people see chunk errors and then they don't help you test as much because they don't feel it's a safe environment. So it's kind of like, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate for you guys because it's like if you bring out a really good patch that everyone wants to play on, then you get loads of feedback, yeah? But then if you bring out a patch that people go, oh, you know, because they think, oh, I'm going to lose, even though you don't lose anything, do you know what I mean? People think, oh, chunk errors, this is bad. And I saw a few comments yeah. from people, you know, and it just means that they you get less feedback, which sucks because that's what this is all about. It's an alpha, so we need feedback. Yep. So everybody be hitting those bug reports. Yeah, no retry and no exit. You hit the middle button and you try to tell him what you did or what you were doing at the time of the crash. Please. And then... Sooner the... Just remember that. Yeah, sooner the update comes out, you know? As soon as we've managed to help him squash the bugs. So I think... That's all of our questions. Um, I'm going to uh, give... I do have one more. Oh, quick one. Sarah, go for it. Um, and again, I don't know if this is covered or not, but uh, I was wondering if you guys had started, and if so, uh, if you're starting to get things hammered out with a life support system, like are, are you guys figuring out um, you know, air in ships and things like that? Or is it still just down the road? That's uh, that's not something that we're focusing on to, on at this point. We're trying to get the ships in general to work, making them have more RP function for the player. Will come afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, even just having the gravity between sectors has been a huge leap forward. Oh in that. God, yeah. I can, oh, go, so I can go surfing on my own now. It's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't need a co-pilot to come and pick me up when I fall off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> I think we've been going for about four hours. Wow. Thereabouts. Yeah. Um, hold on. One quick second here. I'm going to give... Um, let's see. Um, Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, any last words? Thanks everybody for watching and tuning in and sticking with us for this epic four hour uh, yeah. Stream. Yeah. Going one, straight down. Um, I'll, I'll go last. I, I, I wanted to yep. draw up just so we don't close without me saying it. You guys can go ahead, though. All right, Zero, do you have anything to say? No, I'm good. Apex? He's probably out. Uh, Phantom, anything to say? I'm all good. And Saber? Uh, just, uh, everybody, please be patient with these guys. I mean, you know, they're working their butts off. They do kind of jump around, but, uh, everything that we've seen, especially in the past, what, couple of months, has been leaps and bounds ahead. So, uh, we have great things to come and, uh, definitely looking forward to it. So, thank you guys for such great effort on the game. And, Calbiri, uh, I'm gonna let you have the final words before I sign off. Thank you. I, uh, wanted to thank everyone on my and schemas and the rest of the team yeah on everyone's behalf who's been putting effort into the game mostly schemas uh thank you all for showing up and supporting this game um not just on the stream but on the forum and uh in general i mean it's amazing the community we've been building up and uh, we're excited for uh the things we're going to be providing you guys and to see what you do with it 
Um, we will have more uh, question and answer sessions, and uh, we'll be trying to get more information out for you guys. As uh, um, Schema wanted me to uh, to plug uh, your guys' uh, Lightning Sphere, um, I, I assume you guys have the information for that. I don't actually have yeah, it to the, link. Um, yes, 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 we do. I believe their tournament has actually started. You can go over to their channel. Um, it is Muzzled Elk on Twitch. I, I, I believe it's as easy as searching for Star Maid on Twitch. And there is a little search box on the left of the video right now. And if you just search for Star Maid, as soon as this stream is down, it's probably going to be the most popular one up. So, yeah, by yeah, all means, so go cool. and sh see what they're getting up to. Well, go I check saw them out, guys. Yelby is actually saying that his tournament was yesterday. I'm sorry, Yelby, if we're giving out bad information. It's just that we all got the update in our feed just now saying tournament has started. So I'm guessing Muzzle doesn't change the name of his stream if he isn't running a tournament. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I just got the update and Nuzzled is live right now. I'd love it if we've sent them all over and he wasn't even playing Star Maid. Let me just, I'm gonna go and check this myself. <laughs> we could do a mushroom bomb. Right, yeah. while, while, while they're doing that, I, again, thank you guys all for uh, showing up here and uh, we'll see you next time. And in the meantime, thank you for playing Star Maid. Awesome.